Okay, you can hear us now. Yep. Okay. Cool. Oh, good. That's good. So one, two. So that's a quorum. If we want to call to order, and then just if you guys, I don't know if you want to just sit at a table or somewhere near a mic, but hold me. Just so she can hear you. Might as well. Like it in school. I know I had to do this again. <laughs> historic, historic district. All right, so this. If you can move that mic. No, she's good. The one in front of her is close enough. Oh, it's good. You'd be good, yeah. All right, so districts at six. So this is the historic commission at 545. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, we will open the meeting. Um, can I have a roll call of everybody, please? Kathy Schofield here. Bonnie Beal. Lynn Roberts. Dan Byer. Deborah Flanagan. Just okay, we are waiting on one. Yeah, I'm just okay. pulling this up so I can read the. Uh, the legal notice. So we'll op the open meeting is at six five forty eight. All right. So I will make a motion to open the public hearing to consider the proposed amendment to the historic resource inventory list for sixty nine Blackstone Street. Second. I second it. Okay, well, let Connie open that then. Okay, public hearing is open. So I'll just, I don't know if you want me to read the notice. Mm -hmm. Usually they read the hearing notices. Oh, okay. So well, not notice is hereby given under amended town general bylaws, chapter 30, section 3.1.1, a proposed amendment to the historic resource inventory. A public hearing will be held on Friday, September 16th at 5.45 p.m. to consider the removal of 69 Blackstone Street from the inventory list. This hearing will be open to the public. Public comment will be permitted. The meeting will be hybrid format, and allowing both in-person and remote. Instructions are posted on the website. So that was put in the paper. It was advertised per the bylaw. Um, and so this, the majority of these will come up in December, but there were some time sensitive issues. It seemed like it made the most sense to just knock this one out. Right. Get it off the while well, we already had these other hearings posted. I believe the property owner is here. Um, I don't know if anyone had any questions or needed anything. Okay, this is the property owner of the addresses. 69 Blackstone Street, Mendon. Okay. Yeah. It's one of the ones with the funky the mailing address is like yeah, 70 73. something. So 73. Don't they all have you like might, odd mailing yeah. addresses everywhere? Um Okay, so you have uh, a request to actually remove the property? Yes, please. Okay, and from what I remember, the property was actually built in like 1949. 1949, yeah, I got the thing from Jean about that. And do we have so, anything that would suggest that it's historically significant? It doesn't, all these four things do not apply to it Maybe whatsoever. Not <laughs> I have so, some pictures, um, the inside pictures. I'm going to say, yeah, it's, it's, less than 75 years of age um it is does not appear to be associated with any events or activities as re relevant to mendon any individuals in terms of historical context and it doesn't have any architectural significance is there anything on the land um no. yeah i don't think it would matter it's was i have the deed search i posted it somewhere i think it was all part of like a large lot yeah, that was broken was off okay. hang on i can look it up if you're you actually sent that to all of the members of the commission, so everybody should have seen yeah. it. Yeah, it's on. I'm just I'll pull it up because I don't have. You it. did. Yep. Um, did any members of the commission have any comments on the property? Any reason why this should not be removed from the inventory list? Um, I don't. See any reason um, to keep it on the list? Connie, did you have anything? Yeah, I'm not familiar with the property, but um, if the property owner doesn't want it, I, it's fine with it. Just, it just doesn't. 
<laughs> yeah. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. There's nothing historic about no. it. And that's absolutely fine. They had that's made it from dumpster wood in 1949. That's mm -hmm. where it came from. So. Yep. And that's why we're, we're doing this, because obviously we want to keep the properties. It, I think people have got a misguided idea of what this list is, almost like it's, well, we've got control of your property. You can't do anything with it. No, this is a list that the state requires us to keep an inventory. My question was, why did it even get put on it? Well, it wasn't even reason, 75 years yeah. old. So I know. The reason being, when we started to do this, you have to have like a start point. Okay. And in the past, what we've done is we've tended to go oldest properties to newer properties. But to get this list up to date, mm -hmm. we have to draw a line somewhere at, at, at what point. We could do 1900s, but then we're actually eliminating everything, say, from 1910 or 1920 that could have historical significance to the town. So we said, well, to be considered historic, it should be 50 years old. Do we really want to put 1972 houses on there? No. 1950 houses, you know, still sounds relatively new to me, but we had to just draw a line there. So we didn't want, so that was the line. And then we said, anybody who has any reason why they don't want their house or they don't think their house is significant, just let us know and we'll, we had, by the terms of the way this whole commission, this whole demolition delay is set up, we have to have a public hearing. So I'm afraid we had to drag you down here just so that we can say, yeah, there really isn't any reason why. Okay. And, you know, but we do have to have that start point. But a lot of people are kind of panicking saying, well, I don't want my house to be on there. The state is, is the organization that is maintaining this list of historic homes throughout the entire state. It's not just Menden, okay. but the list that we have, that we have in Macris, is way, way out of date. There's an awful lot of those homes that are just, they're gone. They've been taken down, whatever. Um, so again, this was just a start point that we can work back to. Okay. If we now keep this list manageable and up to date every year, mm -hmm. in 15 years, 1950 is going to seem like really old at the moment it seems really young but it's going to be really old so you know then it's going to be 100 years old but we want to just keep a way of maintaining that list okay so anybody that comes into town that wants to buy your house and says oh i want to knock it down if it's on that list then they are going to have to go through like a demolition delay process only if it meets those four criteria okay. that you mentioned well, that's why i wanted that's to get it done reason. before i sold and it because they were all talking right. I mean, all four yep. buyers people who were interested said it's got it's a tear down there's right. no way you and, could rehab it yeah and it, so. it's absolutely fine i mean they still even if we say yeah it's not historically significant obviously they still have to go to the building department right. and get a permit right and that's not that has nothing to do with us at all if, if it's on that list then we may have to discuss it or have a hearing on it. If it's not on that list for any reason, they're just going to have to go through the normal, um, you know, building department rules and regulations to get their permit. Having said that, if any of the buyers want to demolish it, they're just going to have to go through, but it doesn't have to come to us. Okay. So it takes one step out, makes it a little right, bit Right, that's easier. what I was trying to write. Absolutely. Help the guy out a little bit. Absolutely yeah. the right thing. No, absolutely. And we understood that. That's why Dan was very much, you know, come on, let's get this, let's get it moving, get it sorted I out. I thank you very you. much for pushing it ahead like oh. you did. So <laughs> get it off. Thank you, Dan. I will, just so there's no confusion, it is likely when the demo permit gets submitted, it will get flagged for review and then it will just get rubber stamped. We're still in the process of changing everything over. Okay. But just. Uh, well, that may, that may be, be done. Yeah, it's that may be done. Yet, but... Just in case there's confusion, yeah, they so don't, don't freak don't out and think that all of a sudden, all of a sudden they have to do that. something. But yeah, it just will now be removed from the list of properties, all those letters that we sent out. Okay, very good. So if nobody has any objection um, to having this property on Blackstone Street removed from the list, uh, we can go ahead, take a vote, and approve it. Kathy. Um, uh, I vote aye. Aye. Connie? I vote aye. Dan? Aye. I vote aye. And unfortunately, we do not have Janice there, but we have a quorum, so we're good. 
So, uh, Lynn, I just wanted to ask, um, I believe the homeowner brought some photographs. And, she did. Um, if she would be willing to share that, um, share the photographs um, so that we can have it for our records, that would be wonderful. Yeah. We can photograph them and then get them back to you. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. And and then I would also ask I'll because I there. live on Blackstone Street and I've driven by their house so I many times. I just didn't know what to think. Um, would, if she has any photographs of her dad with the uh, donkeys, we would love to have something oh. like that for the museum. <laughs> So oh, okay. Oh, I have a lot of stuff I'm going to be bringing to the museum. I found yeah. a lot of stuff. Oh, that's oh wow. Al's that's mom that's passed that's away. That's Mary that's Ames, mm -hmm. when she passed away, I have a whole bunch of stuff I've oh. been collecting for the museum itself. Oh, oh, wow. I've got to get it all Seven together. Heaven. But we would like to, to do that with all of the properties, no matter what the age is. Okay. So that we've got that history going of the okay. town, I think. Okay. But um, so everybody voted in favor unanimously. Uh, we will remove. The property thank from you. the inventory list. Thank you very much. Good. For coming in. Yes, thank you. No problem. And then I don't know if we if these Sorry, are uh, worth well, trying to just... scan these and. No, but but it, it's a good. But I'll be back. It. There's a lot of stuff I'm going to have to come with the buyer with too. So. I can I, I can try and scan them and then no probably can just scan them and mail them back. You Might be the thing to do. Or yeah. Right around the corner on Megan well, Ward, so. <laughs> I can do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and I think that's the only one that we have in the hearing, so we can close the public hearing on this, right? Correct. Can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Um, I will move to close the public hearing. Okay. Seconded. Connie, can you second? I, I seconded it. Thank you. The public hearing on this matter is closed at 5.59. Um, so we don't have a whole lot of time because we're going to have to open these the hearings. Um, and I, continue after the hearing? So we could maybe, just there, was, for, there was an item under 48 hours that we need to talk about related to demo delay. Yeah. A specific property with, right. um, what was it, 23 Oxbridge Road. Yep. So if we can, if we can discuss we're gonna, that. This, this meeting will stay open and then district will be open. Yeah, it's only the public hearing that's closed. So Kathy and Connie, if you heard that, um, there will be, there is something just, that came up within the 48 hours that we will need to just briefly um, discuss. So if it's okay with you, we're going to go on to the second public hearing um, and then our, our meeting, the public hearing for the historical commission meeting is closed, but then our meeting is still open. So we'll continue with that briefly after this is done. Okay? Yeah. Spectator seats. Okay. Oh, those signs are downstairs in the hallway by Ellen's office if you didn't okay. get them already. Oh, of course, I just moved the mic from that table, but that was smart to put the little Rock the Block logo on them. <laughs> then you know what they're for. Just you grab a mic. Lonnie, will you just grab that mic so you just so What's that? whoever can hear. Turn some lights on if we're getting too dark. Do you want to open the thing or do I have to? Well, so I think, yeah, so we should call to order the historic district commission meeting. Hearing. So this is a joint meeting. And so there's two public hearings. And I almost wonder, I mean, I guess technically we had to open each one. I mean, it, I think there's a lot of stuff that's going to get discussed, to, although it may be discussed at the same time. Um, so we had posted a public hearing to consider the creation of two new districts on Washington Street um, and Bates Street. Unfortunately, it sounds like there's some issues with the process. Apparently, the hearing has to be 60 days after the submission to the planning board. Mm -hmm. I, we just thought it was town meeting. So I believe we are going to have to have another hearing sometime that last week of November okay. to satisfy the requirements of the state law. It has to be has to be 60 days after August 31st, which I believe is October 30th, but it needs so to be before the town meeting. meeting with the planning board on August 31st? No, no, so we Sorry. we had to submit to the planning board. Right. So it was emailed to all of them. We got read receipts on August 31st. Okay. However, we thought this hearing had to be 60 days in advance of the town meeting. It has to be 60 days 
after the submission to the state and the planning board, the state submission was long done because right. she said we don't have to resubmit because it's the same thing. So we probably have to have a second hearing, but I think it would be helpful if there's any comments now to just to talk through it and, you know, if there's stuff that can be changed or anything that. Everything that you had submitted to the planning board um, is sufficient according to. Well, so we may, you know, we may want to follow up with council and make sure that everything is okay. proper, but um, and they may want to discuss it too. But they, okay. so I spoke. Let me find the lady from the state's email. Um, it's right here. I sent you that. It's not a zoning change. The planning board does not have to comment. They don't have to hold a public hearing. Um, but there said there's nothing about the method or acknowledgement. But we have to wait 60 days after the transmittal to hold the public hearing. Find it now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Laws are guaranteed to state not to eliminate some of these. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. There's a few people on. It's okay. Um, so I don't know. I guess we should formally open the public hearing on the proposed districts um, since. Yeah. Yeah, we have to open the hearing. Um, I would read the legal notice if I could find it. Hang on. Notice is hereby given under Master in the Law, Chapter 40C, Historic Districts of the proposed creation of two new districts in the town of Menden, the Washington Street District, 4 through 31 Washington Street, and the Jotham Hayward District, Hayward Dis Homestead District, 6 Bates Street. This public hearing will be held to review and discuss proposals. This was posted. It was put on the paper. It was mailed to everyone within the district. Um, I believe it may have also been mailed to the people in all the districts too, because I sent yes, everything. Yes, we got one. Um, it's been on the website. And then just again to clarify, we will have to have another hearing. So we'll probably do a postcard to everybody that would be affected by this district, and we'll have to set a date on that. So does that? But that. Mailer will need to get sent out within a certain amount of days prior to. Yeah, we have to pick a date between, I believe, probably November 1st and November 14th. And then we need to put the thing in the mail probably no later than October 1st ish, which mm -hmm. will give us more than two weeks. I think if you can get it in earlier, it might be better. Right. Um, we just got to pick a date and make sure it doesn't conflict with anything. Um, so could even do that now if you want. Yeah, I think we should. Um, so November 1st is a Tuesday. Should we hold the hearing then? We could do November 1st. I would need to negotiate with Ann over oh, the CPA meeting at 7. Yeah. Could we, oh, okay, could we go to the CPA meeting? Right. So okay. we could hold it at 6 if we're done. The way we could do it. Feedback that we received. The third, the fourth. The last time around, people were frustrated by how close everything right. was to the um, yeah. town meeting. So the soon, I know there's like a certain amount of days, so we're kind of like. Well, could we but have the hearing at six? At this point, we just need to pick a date in these two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's that we can. We have all the time in the world to post it. So I think just specific for availability is the first question. Um, so. I'm fine with the Wednesday then. I don't know. What I can I can't do Wednesdays. Um, we could do the Thursday. We just run up against possible ZBA. Um, I'm just saying that this hearing is on the 6th, that the CPA is on the 7th. At, at, excuse me. This hearing is at 6 at p.m. Yeah, we, so we could do it at 6 o'clock on Tuesday the 1st. If that works, we just we get to be out of here by seven. Well, if there's lengthy discussion, why would you want to be pushed up against that? I mean, especially when you can do the sixth, which doesn't have anything in it right now. If you guys book the sixth, which is just two. November 6th. It's election it's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. Oh, October 6th. Was, oh, we, so what are you oh, saying? No, it has, has to be after. November. has to be November or later. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong. So we could do the, you could do the third. We could do the seventh. Although that's what's the third third is a Thursday. Yeah, but it's not a, an election day. And again, I'm only it's just a giving a suggestion. This isn't my yeah. committee, so I'm but the third is open <laughs> now too. Yeah, Thursday. I mean, 
the only the only thing with the third is we just got to co coordinate with Ellen, but we can figure out a location. Worst case, although now we now we have access next door, so never mind. Wait a minute, the third has no meetings in it at all. Right, but I'm just I know it's coming, so. What's coming on the third? Just in general, if she has a hearing, it's going to be on the third or the seventeenth for ZBA. So I'm just trying to avoid. So I'm just, but we can go in the library. We can go next door, the police station. So it's not an issue. That's fine. So, so if the third works. At 6 p.m. So it's going to be within two weeks that they. No, that's irrelevant. It has to be sometime before seven o'clock on the night of the town meeting. It just has to be enough time that we can advertise it properly and it's 60 days after we mailed the thing to the planning board. So it has to be after October 31st, I believe. Then we have all the time in the world to mail out notices. I'm probably just going to do a postcard if that's acceptable. So 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock on November 3rd. Um, but then, you know, right now while we're here too, if anybody's on the call, if there's anything, you know, might be worth just going through and talking about. Um, I know Jack Hunter, if I can find his email, he did raise a question about that open land parcel. I forget what number it is. It's the one that's landlocked. Is that number 30? Might be 30. Um, so I, you know, yeah, what he, what did he say? Hang on. <clears throat> Here we go. What is the historical significance of parcel 8-242-30? Um, and I believe our previous discussion, it was we felt that it should just be the whole expanse of Washington for consistency's sake. Um, and his his reply is he said it didn't really seem relevant. Do you have a, um, the map that you can pull up? Yeah, hang on. Did I join the meeting on this computer? Hang you said it's landlocked. It's a landlocked parcel. It's un, it's unbuildable. It on paper it has frontage on Washington because in Menden every street is assigned frontage on a street. Right. So that just happened to be how it worked out. Um, Plus it's in the middle. Of, it's, it's smack dab in the middle of a wetland. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's all. It's not. Yeah. You can kind of see on this. I think when we were when we were so talking about this parcel. that particular parcel. It doesn't really affect anything if it's included. And when we first put together the local historic district, it was the opinion of Chris Skelly that you, if you're going to do a district, you include everything within that district. You don't start pulling out odd bits. It's got to be like the whole area. So that's why we said do it. It, it does, it's got no effect whatsoever to the owner. It's just a piece of land that, yeah, does it have historical significance? No, but then again, some of the other houses in the district don't either. So, you know, it's it it was just it was their view. Otherwise, I believe we've got to change the parameters of the district and have it be like number, I don't know, three to 28 and then no. 32 to whatever um, yeah. it. it it's well, just that whole Swiss cheese kind of thing that they were talking about. Well, they don't, they do not approve, and I don't think Historic Commission would approve, Mass Historic Commission would approve of a Swiss cheese. Well, it, it, if you're doing a district, no, if you've got, I, I agree with you, that's exactly what they said to us when right. we did the survey, when we did the study committee, was, you know, you, you have, you decide where you want it to start and where you want it to end, the whole area involved you don't start pulling odd pieces out but i think the only thing that would affect it is the whole thing on new construction if indeed for some miracle that was not a wetland and the person had some sort of way of it building it wet. Right. I, I believe i believe it's, the whole piece here, is i'll look wet. it up right it's i don't all, think you can I, build on it at all. i guess what i'm saying wetland. is the new construction when when we presented it to the last when right. mr nanart was there he was actually sort of stunned that we didn't say it has to replicate an historic building right you know i mean they, anything that's basically within the sort of fits in with the community right would be okay so mm -hmm. it's not like it's really limiting no i think yeah it sounds i mean i think there's different types of districts and there's some areas where it would make sense but right from the research you did in our case you know it's already kind of a mishmash of styles you're not saying everything has to be this 
you know, well, Oceanside Cottage it, style. Actually. And then, they, right, the recommendation is don't do that. Um, I mean, anyway, here, let me just read what it is, even though that's the other hearing, but. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know, that was the only comment I got. Uh, I mean, it has no frontage. It likely, you know, with all these houses, you wouldn't necessarily probably even access it off Washington if you did, so. The owner of that landlocked property where does he live that's um it's quirk. it's no. quirk john e senior trustee quirk family realty trust yeah. so whoever that uh, is that jimmy's brother john that, and jim mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. yeah i don't know so and do they have property on washington street or they just owned a no that not, wasn't not within the district Probably because it's somehow related to the other stuff that, you know, the steak and seafood or something. I don't really know. There's all these big lots back there that. So I, I don't, I mean, personally, I don't see any, you know, if, if it's an issue, I would let it go. That's what I, guess. I believe it used to be. So one of these lots that touches it, if I remember back in the day, which are, I think, it's tough to just tell which house is which, but at one point, that did have some access onto Washington Street. Okay. And I feel like that one with the weird slice up the side yeah. was the access to it. And then they build a new house there. I think is it's that, there, that small, like brown tannish house. Is there an easement on that deed to that wet piece? Do we know? I don't know. I guess the only, I guess my Look. feeling is if we're getting push back on it, I don't, I don't think it's worth the, the fight on that on that one specific I agree. piece but I but I, I, I understand what you're saying about the Swiss cheese thing but I feel like that piece of property is just not I think you can just I you think can you can justify and not have the with that specific one though. you can justify reasons to keep it in yeah you can justify reasons not to have it yeah. I think if the owner says yeah absolutely not I do not want it in it then we, if, then we don't it's if we were if if we are to find out that you know there's an easement it's not actually landlocked that there's an easement from one of the properties on washington that's in the proposed district then sure um but if not i don't I can tell you there's no easement on the 22 washington that's that parcel with the slice there um so with the house there you wouldn't be able to like subdivide that and yeah. Who's the termination ink? That's, that's me. Um, that's Mr. Meehan's group. One of them. Oh, one of them. One of the companies, I believe. Why do they own? Oh, because they, they bought. They that's probably what owns the 18 Washington now. Is that eight twenty or twenty? Oh, twenty. I don't know. So twenty is another one. Yes. No. See that slice that. Yeah. That that skinny lot that goes up next to eighteen. Here, let me share this. I think it's twenty two is the one. Hang on. But either way, I don't. You're talking about this weird. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. It's right up there. No, the Nick go over a little bit more. This one? That key, right, that, that one. That one's 20. So let me look that one up. I'm looking it up for DDAP now for 20. So if you can. And then you can. Oh, I had the register. Yeah, I have it open. So if it's new enough, mm -hmm. deed. Another. This is another area where all the numbers are screwed up, isn't it? Yeah, well, because, you know, they just inherited it. And Menden, I mean, so Menden didn't really have mailing addresses, so to speak. It was like rural routes. This okay. idea of referring to parcels with a number is fairly new because mm -hmm. I water, it's all screwed up too. You're trying to like figure out what's what. Beginning of the sun, southerly. This doesn't mention an easement either. So I, I don't know. Like I said, I wouldn't, it was, it was brought up at the last hearing six or whatever months ago. I would be in favor of just pulling this out if that makes people happy, you know. Oh, yeah, and I guess it's worth pointing out that, little blue house, that if you developed this fear, forget all the issues, if you developed this property, it wouldn't really be visible from Washington Street. So it probably isn't necessarily as important to the district on Washington Street. You know, yes, you would have, a, you know, at anything, you'd have a road or a driveway or somewhere, and that's it. If you pull up Street View, can you show us the house in front of it? Maybe. The the number 20 yeah. is that little teeny tiny one that's being rented. Hang on. One of those bungalows. 
Hmm? One of those bungalows. Yeah, it's it's and kind of it's one of those houses you drive by all the time and you never notice it. It's oh, you notice them all. I took. Okay. <laughs> because I actually adhere to the speed limit. So do so by do the I, way, do I, I'm a standard. So do I. How many people do not know how to read now? Uh, yeah. yeah. Window. So it's like I don't know if we're quite in the right spot. So it's on the left over here. So there's I this. Mean, so Lynn, I don't know what we're looking at. Is this what one is of them? Year twenty was built. Uh, that's not no. That's Mine, not too one. far. Yeah. Google is a little hard to. There's a white one. Uh, Google has recently this? refreshed the area, so we're no longer working. No, with no, you're on the wrong side of the road. Side, yeah. yeah, you're on. That's you keep, that's keep Jay going. Krause's it's going to be on the left. Gotcha. It's opposite that on the left. So it's it up is. here. That's so it's it. that. Yep. So it's all wooded. So and then you got that. Just to. So, I mean, could someone potentially, the owner, who being Determination Inc., decide to tear it down? And I then, think that they don't own the thirty. Yeah, I they think own, that was the plan. That, that was, was the plan. They own twenty. But okay, but I mean, if you took it down, you could then you now have access to all right. The but I still, but I guess and then that becomes frontage more. I guess that. Yeah, so that's the question. It's in the middle of a. Um, it's in the middle of. It's a really full on thing. marsh. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, and 20, I can look it up. I, I get distracted. Number 20 is just that little. 20 Washington Street is 1950. Those are those ones that it sounds like they were like some of the early kind of uh, so called affordable, just small cottages. So um, I have a question about that property that you were just looking at. Um, my understanding was when um, um, uh, uh, John Nienert was presenting an access road, it was going to be uh, like a secondary access road. It was going to be through that area. I believe that's right. The house and do a fire road. Well, they were looking to develop all of 18, but I think we have to be careful that the district really has no involvement in future construction other than what it might look like. Like the, the purpose of this district right. is absolutely not to restrict or regulate yeah. potential development. It's just to preserve that Washington Street mm -hmm. that's there and ask that stuff is built in accordance. I mean, I think based on the plans they had either way, I mean, it sounded like they were willing to, to work with the design anyway, and you wouldn't, you're not gonna see into the back. Right, right. No, I'm, I'm just curious to know why, you know, we're proposing a, a, a road into a wet land. But I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think they're proposing a road into this property. I think that if that were a potential proposal, then it wouldn't be discussed here. Yeah, it would be a quantum. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not anything to do with us here. Mm -hmm. but, but I do believe from when we were talking to John before, when he was presenting it, it is their intention that number 20 is coming down. And it's okay, well, not historic, it's not. Okay. Right. So I don't I don't know what the, the plan is on that, but as far as he said, that one's coming down. Okay. So anyway, I just feel like if that piece is going to be, you know, an issue, then let's take it out. I don't think you're going to get that Swiss cheese feel with the is that one piece that you're not going to see? It's all wetlands. They're not going to do anything with it. Let's let's with, not let's pick oops. our battles. Well, I, I mean, don't think that that's one that makes zero we really sense. care about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the wetlands wouldn't. We don't have um, authority over that anyway. No. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, put, we, put a house in the swamp. We well, extended to. We extended <laughs> to 31 I can specifically. Commission, commission, but at any rate, more. but that's not up to us because of that farmhouse. You know, because 31 is the last, that 1910 house. Right. You know, the and then 28, 1910, 1930, 27, this mm -hmm. isn't a date on it. Right. 26, 1915, 19, you know, so there's some significance there. So just really quickly, if we pull that piece out, now we resubmit to the planning board and our 60 nope. number starts. I don't think, I don't believe this triggers anything new. I will on verify six, with Jen Doherty one. again. Well, if we submit to the planning board now, we're done. Yeah. So if that's a requirement, we're all over until the Maytown meeting. 
because mm. we don't have enough time. Right. But I don't believe when I talked to her, this came up before, I don't think that affects anything. If anything, it's just one less lot in the district. So say we leave it and down the line, the owner comes to us and says, hey, I really don't, I'm not happy with this being a part of the district. Can we amend the, so, the actual district and remove it after the fact? I don't believe Legally, so. I think we could, but I think that would set a horrendous precedent of the idea okay. that don't believe you can, can take the Swiss cheese approach and start pulling lots out of the district. No. I think if, if it shouldn't be in, it shouldn't be in from the beginning. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Was a and I, the state, right, you, the state may have a big issue with that. Because that's not what the purpose I of this is. With it. I mean, that's yeah. the whole idea of it. We're, we're preserving a certain amount of land, and then all of a sudden, you just because you know it might upset somebody, right? We're going to start pulling pieces out. Mm. So then, let's. Know, so then, it. I guess to to that, let's remove it and. Well, I'll verify with her. Yeah, we can discuss we, at this next meeting. I just stay and see if we can pull it out at this point. Um, do we do we even want to talk to Mr. Quirk and say, do you want us to pull this out or do you want us to leave it in to see care? I mean, I don't want to put words in somebody's mouth, but I would bet a lot of money that they would be more than happy to not have this included. Okay. Um, um, but think, if it doesn't abut Washington Street. It, it doesn't, no. It, it, it doesn't abut, but it. I it know there the could be address. access, but that. Yeah. I mean, it has a physical address. I mean, I guess if somebody wanted to the mailbox up there there's no there's no way it can have a physical address if it if it if it's, anything, no, it's, it's, gonna, it's yeah. left over from when it when it did touch because i believe that that house next door the one that's in a, uh, the tan house right yeah you following them, that when that was built i believe that was cut out of that lot that lot because that lot did come to washington street at one point what is the address that it has of the town 30. House? No, no, no. Oh. The, the, the the landlock piece. The landlock piece is 30, 30 Washington. Yeah. That's its tax address. Um, and the other piece with the townhouse is 22. By virtue of that's, you know, they threw a dart at the map and said, the I guess that's 30, Washington. Yeah, yeah, this landlock piece is number 30. So here I can uh, looking at it on the I'll look this up again. So, yeah, so it goes from 28 to 32. I mean, it's very clearly, no one's going to do anything with it. The town is assessing it at $10,000. Right. Well, my attitude is even if somebody does something with it, it's really not part of what I would term the Washington Street District. And you so, definitely can't build on it. And it's so, only, no. only 14,000 you know, it's it's like 14, like, 680 square feet. It's not like it's a, a little bit of wetland really? going through it. It's, it's only 14. That's, that's what it says on here. Wetland. Like that's 14.68 acres. I mean, I can understand maybe and if somebody sneaks by. And that is why my glasses are not. <laughs> <laughs> let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. To get oh, the driveway. Yeah. I said, like, Dad, you'd have to fill in the whole piece of. But let's. Um, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you never know, know, but. How many acres is there? So I guess looking at. 14.6. Looking at the rest of the district. We're confident with everything else that mm -hmm. is relevant. You know, we did include. There's vacant land at 9 Washington Street that um, actually also does not, it looks like it's a back parcel to a lot. Um, I just feel like we should. And then there's vacant land that has frontage on Washington Street, which is 13 Washington, yeah. which may be somehow deed restricted as well. But those parcels are, I think they're not wet. They're more likely to, they're, and they're right next to, you know, they're within, I mean, this is within 40 feet of the district versus mm -hmm. this one is within 600 feet away. Looks like it says so this length it. is. So we make a motion to remove it. Um, so you are going to, we are including 31? 31 is included oh. because it's a 1910 farmhouse. Right. Um, I mean, it, again, I, the idea was to stop when the old houses stopped on Washington. Right. Which was where it was. Um, yeah. We did not include those other houses. I thought they, they got like 34, 32, 24, 26, 28. Um, and I don't know what the ages of those are. They're all about, they're all about 1920. Um, actually, no, this map is wrong. Hmm. 
That's interesting. This is the one from, let me look at the, the one we did before. Great. Oh yeah, he, no, his CMRPC's map is wrong that I had him. So this is the, let me put this up. The map that's in the proposal is correct. So see, it includes these houses here, but we, we did leave off 32, 34, and 36. Um, which I don't believe, I don't know, because it seemed like none of them. Yeah, I think we said that that was not. 36. It didn't, it, it, there was no point in, I mean, you're just adding houses. For 1987. Point. Right, it's a historic 1987. Let's keep it historic. 1990, so that's the end of the new houses yep. on, or old houses. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. All right, I get it. So I will have him remove 30. We're going to make sure those match up. Um, is that the only aspect that, that we're, any piece that we're removing? Or? Yeah, I, I mean, unless somebody else has other comments, or I don't know if anybody on the call has comments related to the, the proposal. Um, okay. Uh, I move, we remove, we remove, I move, we remove number 30. Um, what is known as number 30 Washington Street, which does not um, actually abut Washington Street from the local historic district. I second. Oh. Is that correct or do you want me to add more verbiage? No, and then. I guess all um, all those in favor. So aye. aye. So the district commission is all aye. here, correct? Oh, Janice is online now. Yep. She's been online for a oh. while. Yeah, I've been there. Okay, so then we need to take a roll call vote because we're partial Sorry. remote, just to make sure Cindy doesn't yell at us. I don't know how to take a just roll. Just say just your name, your name and I. Or nay. Deborah Flanagan, I. Jane Lowell, I. Ruth O'Grady, I. Dan, I. Jim Roberts, I. Jack. Oh, no, because this is district. This is, yeah, this is just <laughs> district. Although I suppose if commission wants to vote. Commission wants to vote on it, too. Thoughts. I mean, Janice, I. That would be helpful. So then I don't know if there's anything else on the district. Otherwise, we can close that and move on to the design guidelines. So motion has passed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Um, regarding the design guidelines, do you want me to read the notice? Well, I, I don't know if anybody on the call has any more comments on the district first. We'll just double check. And I think we should close that hearing. I motion. I move. I move to close <laughs> <laughs> the hearing um, regarding the creation of two new districts. Second. All those in favor? Jane, I. Ruth, I. Dan, I. Yeah. Yes. I. <laughs> then we get Janice. I actually think you're not supposed to make the motion if you're the chair as oh, well, but. Nice. Oh, that's right. I don't know. I haven't read my Robert's rule of order. I, all right, so then why don't we all move to open, <laughs> open the public hearing for the that's design. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, the design guidelines. So, a notice is hereby given under Mass General Law, Chapter 40C, Historic Districts of the Proposed Amendment of the Design Guidelines for the Mendon Center in Taft Homestead Districts. Um, everybody has read the proposed changes. Um, and they were posted online, although yep. I do have several new things that came I, in i so I, i'm gonna i'll put them I'll put them up on the screen okay yeah we so can go through each Chanel, one of them um offered some insight and advice and um dan made some edits and then i don't know if anybody on the call has things and we, sh we should probably specifically talk about, like we'll highlight all the things that are being proposed to be changed so let me um put this up hopefully this is not super tiny wish I could make that thing go away, but um, I also learned we can amend our rules and regulations without a public hearing. It's the design guidelines that need a public hearing. So if we're just changing like 
procedures on how we accept applications or something that won't need a formal hearing. Which is nice, um, not that we're changing a ton. Um, so I left the letter. Um, that was in there. I rewrote this application. I mean, this is more rules. I think we rewrote the application process. Clarified kind of the process, so a proposal comes in the chair, the vice chair, the designee reviews it and confirms whether it's something we need to vote on. Um, let's the commission know if somebody objects, then we can push it to a meeting. Um, and then uh, that way, that way we're not having this whole double meeting thing that was going on with the historic commission because mm. a lot of stuff, you know, if some permits coming through to replace a roof, we don't need to have a meeting to talk about that. It's just a roof. Um, and I haven't had time to do it. Brendan also suggested we make a flow chart, so I will do that once we approve this process because I think that would help people. Um, I copied in that FAQ that Kathy had pulled together. Mm. Again, that's not really part of the design guidelines. It's just more advisory stuff. Um, and then the actual guidelines, I'm just going to go through to the changes. Um, so this is the overview exclusions. I copied this over from the bylaw because it was missing. That just says that the bylaw does not prevent the ordinary maintenance, repair, or replacement. Um, and this actually just came up if you saw that email across the street there. So, like, that's a situation where they're just replacing the rotten boards on a deck with this, you know, that doesn't need a hearing. No. Um, demolition, I just added clarification to review the, by, the bylaw um, and that, that it's separate from the district commission. Um, Real quick on that one. Yeah. So, okay, so there's no demo, there's no additional demolition delay in this. The demolition delay still resides in the bylaw that it, that it is. Right. I mean, demo, demolition would require a certificate of approval or whatever from the district commission as well. But in our case, we're looking at how, you know, within the district. So are you tearing down that house to put up a steel building or is the replacement going to meet the same guidelines of the district within the, the new construction? But we can't. Well, I guess we can theoretically we can refuse to issue a certificate of applicability and they could appeal us to to the courts. Um, I think district has a little more power, but I think. I, mean, I guess I'd have to think about it to think this through. Um, renovation or replacement in kind preferred to demolition on all or a portion of historic structures. Decorative elements should not be removed without approval preference given replacement in kind. I mean, we'd have to research that a little further. You know, I think I think we'd have a hard time from the district just saying no demolitions, goodbye. I think we find ourselves <laughs> getting appeared and appealed in court on that, which doesn't really serve anybody's purpose. But I think it serves as some protection to say that, you yeah, know, if something's coming down, it's being rebuilt with something that's within the district and not something that's totally out there. I mean, I, I don't foresee like any issue in the current district or even on Washington Street that right. we see something along those lines of, of demolition to put up a steel building. But as we continue to grow this, which I believe is the intent, mm -hmm. we might start spreading into areas, especially along the commercial route, that may, which is limited. But if as we start yeah. to spread in those directions, that that may then become an issue and may need to be looked at a little bit further at that mm -hmm. point. Um, but I mean, it's a good Washington Street or down. I mean, this is kind of what general and commercial here, but I, I, yeah. I don't doubt anybody's going to buy the your building on the corner to, to knock it down to put up a steel building. It just wouldn't make sense in this right. area, you know. I hope it won't be our well, building for. Well, I guess <laughs> I'm just using you know to. I, 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 I wouldn't be too. I, I mean, look, and, I, and I, I'm not a big guy in regulations, and you know that, but. I still wouldn't want to see something like that right. in, in our in our Well, but I think but that's like a, go ahead. No, I was going to say when they talked about putting a CVS up there at the corner. That well, would I mean, within the historic. It, but but, well, it's not in the district. In the district but, well, no, yeah. but it's pretty close. Yeah, it is pretty close, but I think that um but that that's a good example to say that you know you can build the CVS or whatever, but, but it needs but to look a certain way. Right, exactly. That's yeah. What yeah, the district can't can't, can't prohibit but prohibit commercial buildings. No, our our whole the whole idea here is that we're guiding. 
builders, contractors, commercial owners. But to have them I'm fit in with the area. I, I, that, I think that's the thing. I mean, the, historical, what you've got. the historical society actually is working on a book to um, uh, show all the historic homes as well as the ones that have been torn down. Mm -hmm. And there are some, I keep bringing this up and people are going to smack me pretty soon, but the, um, the house of Jonathan Russell, who mm -hmm. was a national figure. Right. And we've got that lovely metal building where his house well, used yeah. to be. But you I know, mean, so I think, I think that's what we want to prevent. You want to prevent not... that in certain areas. Right. But there's still, I mean, yeah, that was very sad. But at the same time, there's still a place in Menden for buildings because we want commerce in town. So, right. but as long as it's not in the protected areas, you know, I, I'm not also I'm wondering how far we're going to go. I mean, are we going to go to 140 and start? Well, so to me, I think, you know, I know we've talked about North Ave. Right. Where there's a huge, I mean, that is a National Register Historic District. You know, I mean, we talked about Bates, but I think Bates, it's like every other house. It, there's, it's not even to the density of this area where it That's probably right. makes sense to look at individual houses. There aren't that many historic streets that are formal districts. You've got your design guidelines mm -hmm. set down in these historic areas. I mean, there have been other towns that you go to and you see a beautiful little building on the side and it's Dunkin' Donuts. Right. They can't yeah. have all these different color right. buildings and everything, but they can do it tastefully in town. Tastefully, I think that's, that's what I mean. What yeah. we, right. That's what we need right. to fit into right. the area. Is, yeah, mm, yeah. Is, is just this town actually not against them but more no, commercial yes. yeah. no, right. no, no, totally. no, 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 i'm not saying that i, I what I, and and i and i believe that so when you talk about the middle building you're talking about like the, the old vna building is where, where, I think, yeah but well, that could be an example i mean i think we're talking about new construction was, too right? i mean geez i, I don't even remember the, yeah, that was I in the 60s that was in the 60s the was, the BNA, i wasn't even born i'm right? not right so what i'm saying is <laughs> that in that in in that since then right Things have really changed, and zoning's even changing now. We're, we're working on that piece, or the planning board is working on that piece, so that that even the planning board has more teeth to say, "Hey, look, we want the build. We want you to change the facade of the building to fit into what we yeah. have here, right?" So that that's happening too. And then on top of this, in our in in our in our village district that we want, where, they, where we're trying to expand from. I, I would just caution maybe a little bit, like you're saying, that, that to go too far with it, but to keep right. keeping this area well. But again, we also, on top of that, we have one other level that's being, even being added. So we now have that, 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 that we can tell people, hey, we want to see renderings, things like that. And especially once they go past right now, because the, the, the 200 foot line, once they go to that and they have to come to zoning relief, zoning has even more power to ask for renderings um, than even the planning board, because certain things are by right. So now that once we change the zoning bylaws, though, that the planning board has that, which we might even have changed some of that already, that they have that authority now to say, look, no, we don't want steel buildings. We don't want what that one is. We don't want even what's going on on um, at the old Taylor Rental, I believe they're changing the facade of that building as well on the outside. It is a steel building, in it, but it had the, that traditional right. steel look on the outside. So I think that in, in multiple cases, we're heading in the right direction. Um, but again, we're trying to keep this for that specific district of, you know, originally when we talked about this village, I think I was on this, I was on this committee right when it started, right? right? Mm -hmm. It was me, you and Mike Goddard, I think, yep. right? So that... I'm just saying we have, I guess what I'm saying, right. we have extra protections even in, in place now. But I think, but I think we've got to be reasonable. <clears throat> yeah, oh, of course. Reasonable. And everything of course. we're doing with right. this town, well, as we've I, got to be reasonable. Yeah. As I yeah. said, that's exactly what the, I mean, I got those from the National uh, Preservation um, of Historic Places mm -hmm. and also from the bylaws, um, new construction in Wellesley and Reading. Mm -hmm. Um, and they do not say you need to replicate. You, yeah. As a matter of fact, they they actually um, don't want people to do that. Um, they just want it to fit into the yeah. replication. Right. And, makes sense, and which which makes sense with the area. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I would be for. Just, and the yeah, other thing, to too, is we area. talked about, um, for instance, Millville Street. There are some historic homes on Millville Street, but they're so spread out. Mm -hmm. um, you can't really 
you wouldn't want to make the whole thing no, a historic wouldn't. district. No. So, but you can't if you're going to ask homeowners if they want the house saved. It has to be voted on within a district that's being presented because the state does not like you to just cherry but, pick. Well, that's not strictly true. Well, that's what Chris Skelly told me, but well, he doesn't work there right. anymore. <laughs> exactly. But that's not strictly true. When we were doing this, they told us that there are two approaches. There's the total district approach, and then there's the Swiss cheese approach. The state favors the total district. Right. But they understand, like in your uh, example, where there isn't anything there There was your house. I mean, there's lots of other historic homes around there, but not, as you say, not enough to make a district. So that's where we have to now step in and say, well, we can't do, we're not going to make the whole of Menden no. a historic district. No. It's stupid. No. But what we can do is we can approach people and like right. with this inventory list that we're going to have now, you know, we'll be able to see all these homes and people that want to stay on it or whatever they want to do. We can approach people and say, okay, we've now established how we do this. Are you interested in making your specific home? And the state will, will go with that. It's just a lot more work. Right. You know, you do one area, you just, you can. Well, maybe if you, for instance, if it, it would be cool with, all right with them if we started with Millville Street and um, started with the houses and presented <coughs> six or seven of them. Whatever it you is, know. it just means a lot more work for Deb, but that's fine. I don't mind her doing a lot more work. You mean <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> all right, so should we? Anyway. So, so that's the so same. I think one thing that, that we need to do is make sure that people understand what we're doing or trying to do and why. Because people are going crazy on, I don't want my house on there. You're not going to do this. Yeah. You can't tell yeah, me. What. They think no, no, no. That's not what it's about. And we need to find a forum or a way of letting people know the historic district. Why are we doing it? How many people went on that bus tour because they were interested in the not, history of Mendon? Not only so that, we need but to they, do that. But they were very excited about it. And thank you for contributing that the funding to the that historical was, that society. Was an awesome thing! Everybody loved it. I yeah, mean, it was, I know it. Great. I know. Unbelievable. I, I'm just. I'm actually. A, I, I'm going to have to jump on the kids one the next time they do it. I know. I missed it too. Well, I went on. I went on that but one. Let's, let's try and find a way to let not. people know. Yeah, and you know, it was not really, just have these I mean, meetings where no one comes and no one listens. Let's try and, and find a way to get to people and just say, you know, this isn't about all of a sudden we're doing something and then we're going to present it to you and you've got no say in it. Yeah. That's why we went to right. every house in Washington right. and said to them, this is not scary. This isn't anything you need to be worried about. It's not going to affect the, your, the property value. So right. I think we need to find a way to do that because I think especially historic is seen in a bad way as if we're just trying to stop people doing things, and that's not not the case right. at all. Right. So we've got to find a way to do it. Um, yep. All right. Did so finish getting through the edits. Or? No, we didn't even start. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so so this all stayed the same um, in the fences section. Mm -hmm. This is a change that was suggested by Brendan in an email. So I tried to put something in here, basically just you know. So we we basically say you know fences of an appropriate style. Um, you know, a couple of just general reminders. Location is important. We're saying, you know, we're recommending against uh, stockade, chain link, light metal, concrete, where privacy is an issue. We suggest living fence or a hedge, that plantings are not subject to review. So I added the commission recognizes Mendon's a rural farming community. It's not the commission's intent to unduly burden a working farm. Consideration will be given for fencing required to contain livestock or secure crops. Whenever possible, materials should be in keeping with the historic nature of the district. Any proposed fence that is not visible from a public street way or body of water shall be exempt per the bylaws as it doesn't meet the definition of an exterior architectural feature. Um, and I just uh, his point was just trying to clarify that, you know, you do have farms in the district and it would be kind of asinine to have them have to come get a certificate anytime they want to move a fence or do something. Yeah, yeah. so I. I wasn't sure just trying to soften this a little bit and I, you know, maybe to the other point we might want to think about, you know, with relation to commercial too, at least if there's more guidance we can give on what we would want versus not want. Um, no commercial like specific if this is a commercial issue too with fencing and the very limited spots. Hmm. 
you know, where we're just again, I think that's kind of going to have to be handled bit by bit. Um, so yeah, so that's a proposed change that's new from what was in the draft. Um, this awesome. is all the same couple minor things. Another comment from him was about HVAC. The bylaw excludes window air conditioners. What? Um, what? No. no. Yes, no. window air conditioners are excluded from from is an exemption in the bylaw. Oh, it's an exemption. Oh, oh, is it? oh yeah, okay. they're excluded from review. Yeah. Please. Because they're because they're portable. So right. Brendan's comment was about HVAC and mini splits and basically saying that you know you don't want to unduly regulate you know where the location of the stuff goes is where it has to go. And it would be a shame for somebody to not take a more efficient Especially option. A lot of the older houses that might preserve the home with yeah. where right, they right. can right. put so, that back work. And yeah, I just added some generic guidance, you know, whenever possible, located out of the public view, roofing out of the way, roofing HVAC equipment placed out of the view. Um, when not possible, screening should be used. They encourage modernization of systems with modern systems. They recognize it may not always be feasible to locate stuff out of sight. And then I added in, so the repair of an existing system or replacement of an older unit with newer equipment shall be exempt from review, provided the general outward appearance is not substantially changed. This is a little bit gray, but again, to me, I'm thinking like if you get a big ugly condenser and you're replacing it with a smaller mini split, that's not you know i don't know if we need to get involved in that versus putting in you know like the library where a whole bank of stuff or next door but again i don't think you want somebody feeling like they can't take these steps to preserve it's their also property removable true it's not words, permanent it's not permanent so well it's true it's a little it's more permanent but you're right it's not like permanent. not like it's taking down a siding or something or a very expensive to move plaster or something so i don't know if there was any comments on any of that um i mean let's hear it like <laughs> anybody that that i just feel like whenever you're gonna do that you're gonna do that anyway any hmm. reputable hvc person is gonna not try to no one wants to put your unit by your front oh, door don't. yeah right no no, no, no. right well I across the street from us oh okay. they, yeah they did <laughs> they did <laughs> right yeah. well could and they not put it in the back that's the thing not, whenever not possible there. is the word yeah, yeah. And, and it is what it is like if you don't have any other options and you have to put your mm. condenser in the front i guess right so be it but to this it said a screen you know, well i think i think yeah. brendan took a, a very literal reading of some of this but i think it's good because those are the questions that somebody gets all worked up that, yeah. oh my God, I can't do this. And so I, just clarifying that we're not well, going to these, these, excessively regulate these those things. Guidelines are open for discussion. I mean, you, you're they giving are people guidelines. guidelines. They're not mandate. It's exactly right. It's not a mandate. And if, if I guess what you've got to let them know is if the commission absolutely says, yeah, no, we do not want that then the, it's up to the commission to work with that homeowner to try and find a solution to it. But I don't think mm. it's our right to say absolutely not. Yeah. That's not what it's about. It's let's work together to make a, a solution for everybody, which I, I think mean, you've done here by you're covering everything in wordage that is actually saying, yeah, you know, this is what we would like to see. But, you know, if they've got to come back and discuss it with you, they can. Um. So then this section was just cleaned up. Um, I added some clarification. Um, more cl So we're saying that our definition of a temporary structure is something that's in place or in use for less than six months. Um, and then this was a comment from Brendan. So I added some more. Provided it's not visible from a public streetway or park, again, blah, 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 it shall be exempt from review. Um, and that's that's built into the bylaw of defining an arch exterior architectural feature. But I think this is just restating saying that, you mm. know, if you're putting a little shed in your backyard that's not visible, it's uh, it's exempt as long as it's not like a corner lot where it's visible. Um, so yeah. this why do we have to hide play structures? Well, so that's not, that's what I'm going to. Oh, so this is this was what we had for play structures. And then Brendan made some really interesting comments 
and yeah i just don't even think we should have play structures even well so there's two things so in the get the design guidance i added some language just to kind of soften this but in thinking about it further i wonder if we should actually amend the bylaw to add another exclusion because exclude play structures. that's not something we that has to be done at the bylaw level but right it's like just, that's kind of crazy it's just too much well, I mean, right. I mean, pools, sure. Well, I know. I, I, I kind of disagree with the pools, too. I mean, what? who are we to tell somebody not to have a pool? Because maybe we can see it from the street. I mean, what does that have to do with anything historic? Yeah. I, I can you can't have with a, you. Yeah. I mean, you can't have a pool because I can see it from the street. <laughs> what, if, what if some, I guess, yeah. devil's advocate, yeah. say someone puts in, you know, uh, Above the 12 by 20 above ground pool in their front yard and now it's and they have like this beautiful we to say home and it's blocking pool in your front yard but it's blocking the view i mean an above ground pool is somewhat so, temporary right they've got to have a natural fence going all the way around it <laughs> all right just get rid of it well an, an above ground pool is somewhat temporary right no um, not well okay not or they can be permanent pretty well, pretty difficult yeah. to can, I mean, can we put a pool in the front yard, right? I guess that's the answer, yeah. above ground pool in the front yard. Can you do so that? we're saying they require careful sighting. When possible, they should be located to the rear of the property or out of the view or screen with plantings. So I think this is just framing the discussion, mm -hmm. saying that you need a certificate and we have to talk right. about it. Right, again. So what you're I'm, saying, what I'm saying is why bother? Or, you can't, you, welcome to Menden. You right. just bought a house in this district. Your kids can't have a play structure or a pool. No, no, no. We're doing. No, that's what that says. That's well, exactly what. Right now, says. it Let's says. Come here, and we say it's okay. Right, right. Well, that was Brendan's point too, and so I think I actually think we should draft an amendment to the yeah, bylaw. That being in the original bylaw, was it? it just, no, it's not. It's not listed. So I thought pools were in there, but I thought I don't yeah, think it was. Let me uh, check. But, but I, I, I kind of agree with, with. I think they were excluded. Having a pool. No, no I'll that double check. Hang nature. on. No, no, no right, right. You're right. And, I mean. And who would put one in front of their house? Well, <laughs> exactly. Who would? You're going to buy this. Well, you're right. right. Never say never, but you're right. Like, but, like you said, the condenser in the front yard, yeah, right? But it's a strange yeah. thing to do, but. Right. But I do. But, but even but if they do. structures, I think we want to encourage families into <laughs> okay. town. Into yeah. that and to have and a, to, play, a swing set in the front or a swing right, or something. Right, yeah. I did not even realize that we had placed that. I there. didn't either. And shame on you. Well, this again, I think these were meant. These are meant to be as much guidance for the commission as they are the public. But it's so what we're we're saying put them in. Yeah, so it, I'd put them in the exempt category. Right. Well, so that so that's something because you have to have do. a fence. So if you do put a pool, you, uh, you maybe still have a, to have a fence. Maybe you got to have a ground, fence anyway, you right? Need a fence for an above ground, but an in ground pool you need a fence. Right. Above ground because you can't just walk in. Right. right. And that's right. So you don't want to restrict that. So we so we the fence piece is already there. Most people. But they want the want privacy. Street, want, want, want the privacy in your right. pool anyway. Um, you know, so yeah, I don't know. I just that one. That one was just weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that one threw me right off because I do not remember seeing anything about play sets, swing sets before. No, I think it's sets. really, you know, and if it's. Well, I was going to say, I've got to yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure I like that. The one. only potential, you know, devil's advocate on this is, you know, would this would be like if you had somebody open up a daycare and put yeah, a full on playground in the front of their property. So if that's something we feel we need to regulate. We're not allowed to open a daycare in a. Well, I'm just again. So, but if, if we don't feel the need to, if that affects the historic, then, you know. I mean, and play structures are also mm. temporary. Well, yeah. not when they're the level of like maybe. what's at Memorial Park <laughs> is, you know, 20 easy. years set yeah. in concrete versus is, is, a swing um, set. Sorry, is uh, Willowbrook in the bank in that plaza? Is, is that all part of the current district? Yes. 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 Willowbrook, yeah, that's what I, mean, I was thinking of. There's a play structure in there. Granted, yeah. it's behind the building, but if you come in from uh, Elm, it's you can not, see it. it. It's, you can see it. So that is visible. You know that I mean, that's already that. kind of precedent setting. So if play structures aren't already in there, right? And again, I think it's actually you guys charming. To make a decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it shows you know family town yeah. or whatever. So. Yeah, I'm looking at the. Oh, can you see it from here? Sorry, I'm I mean, you're at the hoping again that if somebody is moving into a an historic home, that they're going to see this, they're going to read it, and then you know, oh, we want to put up a swing set. Oh, oh. well, I'm going to talk to you about that. Right, which well, you is know, kind the of thing is, I, I remember reading a long time ago in Amherst where someone was wanted them not to put up a basketball hoop in the backyard. Mm -hmm. 
And the guy that was head of the commission said, you've got to be kidding me. You know, I mean, let's not. A lot of gated communities don't allow them. And you can't hang your clothes out to dry either. <laughs> but that, but again, we're making it right. So you're, but the, and when you go to those subdivisions that have those covenants, you know, those are, those people made their own bylaws they, and want to have that special say. little place that they live. I don't think that we're trying to do that. In our, no, no, in I don't our think district. we are either. <clears throat> we're trying to protect the historic. Yeah, so right, and to right. take a brief deviation before we get to new construction, are we all in favor then of submitting an article for the November town meeting to amend the district bylaw to add play structures and pools as an exemption? Because that would be that's the mechanism we have to do this through. So we'll add a new exemption. That's section. I, I forget why I closed it now. You don't even need to rush that. You could even put that an annual. If well, I just figured we'll, we got like two days. Let's just get rid of it. Yeah. Alan can yell at us again for changing the bylaws again. But just so so pools and play structures are exempt from review. Sure. Yes, I move that we so. exempt pools and play structures. Second. From the, um, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we can't. Ruth, I. Oh, I don't Aye. think Janice is here anymore. Did she? Did we look? She's still there. It's just shrunken. Yeah, she's still there. No, I'm here. I'm here. Yep. Okay. It's just it, it's because it, well, I have this sharing. All right. So the next section is the new construction that we added in. Um, so I'm not, I don't know if we need to, I mean, we talked about it a little bit, mm. but I think really this paragraph is kind of the, the main idea. So it's, you know, it's stuff that should be compatible, but we're not saying replicate what's there. We're not saying you have to use all whatever. Um, right. What the hell is coming here now? It's seven o'clock on a Friday. We talked about this at our last meeting quite a bit too. Oh, we're coming to get rid of that kennel. Okay. Kennel. They get this is kennel place, has to take it down. Is that considered a play structure? What happened? <laughs> I, I don't think anything happened to it. I think they they that has to go because part of all the work. Yeah. I don't know where it's going. It. Yeah, I don't know where they're putting it, but now they've taken it up to Michelle's it, house now. Oh, it's going to his house. Okay. Cool. Um yeah, so I I mean I you know, I know and we met with um you know like John Nenner came and talked to us at the last right. meeting and kind of talked through what they're planning and to me like that, you know. Right. It's fine. I mean, I, I guess I tend to think of like, is there stuff we wouldn't want as new construction? So, well, they, you know, we would recommend say, against, you know. Right. A huge, if, if you have like Washington Street, all sort of capes and small homes, you don't want someone to come in and build a huge. Mm. Well, all the, I left all these questions you know, that you I mean, found. That, that's what they were recommending. Yeah. So does it have relationship to the height of the adjacent properties? Right. Is and it also the, the lot? They don't want something squeezed in they have a um, actually a photograph of a house this was the national um, yeah register anyway a house where they built a garage that was almost as big as the house next to it <laughs> and it was all squashed into this small lot you know that's what mm. they sounds like something i did <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a small lot though <laughs> um so I don't know. Again, I don't know if there's any other comments on that. Um, yeah, fine. I think we were this, about, you know. Yeah, this this is the one. This okay. shed section got deleted because it got it's moved up with the rest of it. Oh, the garage is well, bigger than the house. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, look at my house with that monstrosity of a oh, two car. Yeah, like it, it is almost bigger than the house. Oh, it's like a cape, and they have put such a huge it's addition. Like, it's you ever a seen nice that one on spot Rentham to Road? Store their vehicles and um, their well, actually, down past the coach and go out that oh, way. Oh, oh, yes. yes. Up against the, the house next The door. house was like a little cape. It's got this huge addition on the back. Oh. That's a zoning issue, though. Yeah, too. right. It's not, I mean, it right. looks okay, but it's just it's just funny how I big. I feel like there's already zoning yeah. in place for um, that sort of thing. So porches. This is just a note about new construction. Should be a, just a reminder about new construction. Um, stairway steps and railings, roof. I added a note about repair and replacement of a roof with same or similar materials is excluded. Because that seems to be the most common permit, mm. just to you know, so 
we're not wasting time. Um, you know, again, paint, it specifies we have no jurisdiction over color, but we're certainly willing to advise if people are looking for information. <laughs> um, this is all the same. Lighting. There's not a lot here, and I we added this, you know, commercial lighting should be of style that fits the district and surrounding properties. Um, you know, I know we had all those meetings about this project and trying to use fixtures that were a little more in keeping. Um, again, I, I, you know, we were talking about this hasn't come up that much. If the neighborhood did go in, what type of lighting would they use? But would that neighborhood even necessarily fully be in the district? Um, what wasn't it only? It's going to, it's all going to depend on how they ultimately divide up that property. But I think, well, yeah, so let's see how this would get applied. Um, it's desirable that original or later appropriate exterior lighting fixtures be retained if possible repaired. So we didn't, so we didn't talk about new construction in this section at all. So I think it would, it would maybe fall under this same idea of, right. you know, stuff that's in keeping. Um, harmony under harmony, maybe. I don't know if we need to add any additional notes here. You know, but I also know, you know, is it realistic to make them put in all fancy, you know, we don't yeah. have anywhere else, we just got stupid street lights. So, no, yeah. right. And I not think like we have lanterns like other towns do. When it comes to lighting, like, I mean, if you. Like even if you go down to Crown Supply, right, and you go pick out light pictures for new houses, everything you really find on the wall isn't. I I, I don't feel like there's anything in, in, at Crown's showroom that I was like, oh god, that would that was my neighbor had that, I would be so you didn't bad. Didn't go to Light and Leader. <laughs> um, but I mean, I know that you can get. They can. There is some new contemporary lighting, but I find that to be more in. Um, like your foyer or something like that. Not not necessarily interior lighting on the outside. Interior lighting, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's mm. nice to, you can get a little well, bit say more like a new it. say like a new neighborhood goes in, right? And they put in sidewalks and then they're gonna yeah. put in street lighting. That's more or less what I was thinking. Right. Say a neighborhood goes in the district. I don't know if we have anywhere in Menden that a neighborhood has gone in and put in their own lighting that they pay for. Now that I'm That'd thinking about nice it. So this is what happens, right? It's town owned street lights on town owned roads and that's it. <laughs> right. But what happens is they actually say, don't put the, the they, they don't go want through the whole process The we put them in the subdivision mm -hmm. on the plans. And then the town says, don't put them in because we don't want to pay for them. Right. So we end up, we end up just stubbing them. They're there if they ever do want to put them in the future, but the lights never end up going in. Yeah, because um, once the town owns them, we get to pay like per fixture. Right. So for like in Blackstone, so what we do find that what we have been doing, so for instance in Blackstone, we just did this, um, and there was one street light either at the very beginning or the very end, I believe we put in. But what we did was instead of street lights, now you have to re rely on the homeowners to put these lights on, but we put um, pole lights at, at the end of each driveway that would then allow for kind of lighting up the whole street if everybody had one time or something like that. So, all right, so it's, it becomes sort of like an HOA fee. No, and well, these were per house. So, I mean, house. again, you have to rely oh, on, okay. on, the, on the homeowners. So, uh, to okay, put so it's not out. like a common expense. It's no, right, if you had, a, if, if it was a, if it was a subdivision that was more condoized or something like that, it was going right. to be a private road at the end, then you would, that would be part of the picture. And that's, I just didn't know if that was, yeah, the, I mean, the proposed neighborhood is it's kind of like the, be more like a condo sorry. situation. Like it's where there is an HOA and they are paying for those things. Yeah. Well, like the con the commercial discussion we just had, I think this is a conversation that has to be had if, if this ever expands into a commercial district. Mm -hmm. Where you're saying, you know, what you know, what do you put in your parking lot of your business if they were in a district, if there was one. Sure, we also have you know, there's even but then it's even planning the, the zoning bylaws yeah. we have for lighting now are all to try to keep you know, it's tough on a, yeah. a cloudy night because the, the light yeah, right. off into the clouds. <laughs> but uh, right, you can see the glow sometimes. But it, the to try to contain and with the new LED lighting that they have, I think if you um, there's like an entire glow over Menden right now. The, if you go down to the fields, because I believe they have the soccer field has. Oh, the then NEFC. Right it's like a line. Those aren't even LED unless oh, he's changed them. Those are crazy. They, they've they've yeah. got it so that when you walk off the field, it's almost pitch black. Yeah. But on the field is bright as day. 
It's great. I mean, we're going by you. Mm, like, that's really cool. Which right? is neat. So at least, so I, the, a lot of the lighting changes, and especially LED light, they've got it so that they, the way that they can adjust it down, it doesn't spill off anymore. It's pretty. It'd be great if some business of the owners, stuff, crazy. if some, you know, commercial mm. business owners put that, applied that, then maybe yeah. we could see it. The stars at night. I do think we should buy a bunch of those flame lamp bulbs and give them to all because there's like four people now that have them up there. They look really good. I think uh, Charlie put them in his thing and those fake flame bulbs. They look like this. Yeah, so they so they look like old <laughs> gas lighting. Like the little hollow. They're like LED. Yeah. 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 They give a lot of light. So I, there's one in the records room or the museum building. <laughs> That whole area, but but when we did speak to um, John Nina about the like, yeah. Washington Street, he did say that you know he would be consulting yeah. and give options on lighting. I mean, you want to be careful because you don't want to have that lit up, and all the people that live on Washington can't see. Right. But I think from the district, we're more concerned about what do the lights look like, not whether they exist at all. Right, and right? The, and, the, and the wattage or the you know, you know the brightness of the lights. That's part. That's zoning. Right. right. Mm. Unless we feel that that's something that should be regulated more within the district than outside of it. Mm. Can we? Mm. To me, I don't think I don't think that's a historic no. issue. No. I mean, it's kind of just saying that you know. But I mean, I get it's kind of interesting. Now we're just overcomplicating. No. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I think trying so. to keep this so yeah. simple yeah. so that people actually. And don't. that was the whole point of yeah working on the bylaw was to make it more user friendly and you know leave it open a lot more. Um. Signs I just left alone here, but just you know, more of basically saying it's you know you got to deal with zoning stuff. Um, but sign if a proposed sign would need to come to us. Um, what is that? That's the right word. Um, and then so this is new. I added all this solar stuff. Um, Basically, this is kind of clarifying the process of solar to again say, you know, we'd like it on the back of the property. We're not going to unreasonably regulate it. We recognize that, you know, solar is a good thing that if it helps pay your bills and keep you in the house. I think you can really, it's all about right. south facing. You know, I think we do care a little bit about, you know, a big giant ground mounted facility, but then I, you know, thinking about it, in a way, you'd almost be better off having a vacant lot be developed with solar than have it turn into a bunch of houses so it's not necessarily something that makes sense to regulate i mean it doesn't look great but well, well, wait, wait a second. i don't know I don't about know. that <laughs> wait a minute pump the brakes on that one so we're going to say that in our district <laughs> don't build a house we'd rather put in a, a, a so large scale no, no, uh, no. i would have to say that we would not not rather i think what i said is that hang on i phrased it a certain way let me find it Something about demolition should not be replaced with solar. I, Hang on. I would not to unreasonably restrict it. We recognize the value. Roof mounted, permitted whenever possible. Away, accessory whenever possible. Ground mounted facilities located in areas not visible. Efforts to screen. A historic structure shall not be removed or demolished to make way for a solar facility. Roof mounted should be considered instead. Ground mounted solar permitted on vacant commercial lots. Maybe and so maybe get rid of this. Maybe preferable to new construction. Right. Yeah, I, 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 don't like, I don't think we should say shall not. I, I don't think I mean if there is if there is um, an historic home that's actually falling down and is going to be demoed. If that person's okay. got acres there and they want to turn it into a solar field, as long as it, it you know, I think the neighbors, I, I think we can dictate what they can and can't. I just do feel like the, the neighbors of, say, you know, said person with the falling down house would much rather a house in its place than a buzzing solar. They field. may well True. do, but but that they might prefer that. Yeah. But do we have? Are we not going to be taken to court if we turn around and say, yeah, you you. You cannot yeah, we, take we, that we, we can be, be taken to court on anything in this bylaw. Well, you so, can't re regulate solar <laughs> so, that I mean, much anyway. I mean, yeah. So, Wouldn't that be another a, to, department? What a solar facility. Yes, I think yes. it would. Yeah. I don't think it's anything to I do with I don't think that story. we have any jurisdiction over no. that. Over what? A solar field in the district? In the very well, so solar, it, it's the very limited properties that are commercial. I just would hate to see a situation where you had a historic home in a commercial district that they're just, you know, somebody wants to just get rid of the house and put in solar because that because it's about the money versus the house falling down where we're saying we'd rather see the house preserved. Well, I think it's a pretty unlikely scenario. 
We are talking place. here right. about local historic districts. Mm, yeah. What about in the situation where we've got one historic home that is a district in itself that's on 30 acres? Right. Well, this or doesn't regulate. Somebody wants to buy that and take that, and that home needs to be taken down. We can't then dictate to them whether they put a subdivision in there or they put a solar field in there. Say if it's way up Millville or yeah. 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 So, so maybe, well, maybe zoning. Town can, but I don't think it's maybe maybe th do this then instead of just having this humongous se section of solar facility that you have right condense it down to that it's preferred that we that it's roof mounted. I mean, if we can't regulate, we can't regulate. But the, the suggestion is that we want roof mounted solar panels and that's it. Again, just well, like what we're, we're saying, saying is that you can have solar yeah. power. And well, so how about this? One of the first things when we said about the district, you know, a lot of people that had no intention of putting solar on their roofs anyway were, oh, you can't tell me if I can't have solar. Well, no. And it was something that was just coming yeah, out. A lot of people really, were worked up. No one was really yeah. doing anything about it, but people got worked up about the idea and had no intention of putting solar on their roofs anyway. But it was, you can't just tell me idea. what to do situation. I, I don't. Well, so why don't we just leave it with, so this is, I pulled this out. So in accordance with Mass General Law, we're not going to reasonably restrict it. We recognize the value. Roof mounted shall be permitted whenever possible, located out of the, out of view. Accessory, that, whenever possible, yeah. located out of view. Efforts to screen it, large scale. And then this is. Did we say residential ground mounted facilities? Is well, so this is a little, this is why I included all these definitions, because it's all, it's defined in zoning. There's not a whole lot you can so like at your house you can have a small scale ground mounted system under a certain size over a certain size it becomes commercial activity so it's not something that's likely to happen in most of the district so like this large scale ground so mounted. we don't see a lot of those around here I, but i do like in in maine and new hampshire you'll see a lot of them. oh yeah you just yeah. all of a sudden you're like driving yeah. through like yeah. so i don't know if this so maybe if we're saying this doesn't even need oh, to be yeah. here or in there yeah yards. i don't know that it needs to yeah. be here dan right. i think let's not put things in there that we're giving people any reason to kind right. of just <clears throat> get rid of it because it, it's not necessary right. i mean if somebody wants to put in a large scale solar field they're not going to be coming to historic they're going to be going to building and right. zoning. well if they're in the district they absolutely are going to have to come to the store right so. they do but it were, but i mean we don't really have in any of these districts where we've got single houses maybe but in the actual districts i mean mm. yeah at this point i mean anyway why are we give it why are we create an issue are, yeah. The Mur is it the Murray's the Murray's home because that just loops around. But again, you're getting it's a one off. There's ones. like one Route 16. You go down, you can't see it. It's in the woods. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. But the, but again, now you're getting a lot of wetlands there. You've yeah. got the Gannett piece that you. I suppose you could put some in, but what Gannett piece? I think piece? that you know, I, I, oh God. I would hate to see solar fields. And so we're just providing guidance related to residential. Leave it at that. I think, yeah. Next to just on Washington. What does it does? God, I hope. I, yes, Colin. Oh, really? Well, what? Where the beehives are? Right. I know. I know. I hate to see solar going. Well, there. he he. We had um, we did some research for that, and yeah. uh, John said if we could pr prove that it was a muster, apparently. Uh, somebody oh. found piles of coins oh, no kidding. there. Oh, um, the guy from Milford, yeah. Marino. Yep. And also some brass uh, fittings for horses, you know. Um, I think, did he find a couple of belt buckles too or something like yeah. that? Yeah, and um, musket balls. And um, John said if we could prove that it was a musker, that he would not build. He was going to build one house. Um, but... Quite honestly, um, and this was Priscilla Koopman who suggested this, and I know the back is wet toward the back, but yeah. she said uh, that would be a good place for a cemetery in Menden. Mm -hmm. um, you can you still have the view. Good point. Um, it's quite a quite a quite a great place for a cemetery. Actually. Right. Tons of tons of room. Right. Well, what's, the, what's the soil like? What's what? A, what's the what's the soil? I like? think it's wet in the back way. Because we've already got that that problem at Swandale. Right, but Hold on, let's see if I, can see it. I think the people in there don't care. So I think. Well, I know. <laughs> Connie, <laughs> it does present a problem in the spring. Right. Connie, yeah, you yes. have something you wanted to say? Well, I oh, did. I, 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 we, 
I wanted to make sure we weren't disallowing ground mounted solar residential, like someone might have a historic home and not want it on the roof and want a ground mount. And to me, that should be allowable. Mm. We want, um, we're, we're not saying that we're, you know, residential size. We're saying whenever possible, ground mounted should be located in areas not visible from the public. Way. But it's actually within the district too. Yeah. Right. It's, the, it's, it's in, if you are in the local historic district, then there are regulations there. But I mean, if you have an, an historic home like where you are and yeah. you want to put a solar array field in the back, that would be up to you to discuss if it was not a district. If you'd made your house a local historic district independently, just like one home, then yes, you would fall under these guidelines. Guidelines, not rules, guidelines. Mm -hmm. But if you are within the local historic district, then these guidelines would automatically apply. And so do these guidelines say you can do ground mounted if you're in the district? I don't think we can restrict ground mounted or but or, or rooftop. Because they're getting better over time and they have ones that pivot and catch the sun all different angles. And you know, over time it's probably gonna make more sense to do ground mounted than on the roof. So all we're all we have right now, this is what's being proposed, is basically saying in accordance with MGL, blah blah blah, it's a policy to not unreasonably restrict it. They recognize the value. Um, roof mounted shall be permitted whenever possible. Panels should be located where they are not visible from the public way or on sides of the roofs facing away from the front of the property. Accessory or ground mounted whenever possible. Accessory or ground mounted facilities should be located in areas not visible from the public way or on the rear of the property. Efforts should be made to screen them from view with plantings or other means. That's all we're saying. Just say they should be screened yeah. from public view. Just a note that. Where? Of course, we put them in the school, Misco School across the street, and you can see that from the you know, that you know what? Well, right. So we're saying, we I mean, if, if, a, down if somebody in the district comes to us, they're going to say, I want to do this. And we say, well, we recommend out of the way. And they say, well, we're doing solar carports. And we say, OK, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I think it's saying if you have a big, you know, because solar, again, it's designed. So they're going right. to go where the sun is. So if they have a choice, we prefer it out of the view. But we're not saying no. And I don't think this Mass General Law Section 3, th Chapter 40A, we would have to have a really darn good reason to say no to solar because it's mm -hmm. one of those things that's partially preempted at the state level. Right. Like it's just like the HVAC section. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we are, we, you know, you, we understand you need condensers, but if you can. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just wanted to make sure we weren't. We'll get um, rid of the best of this. Couldn't have ground mounted. I wanted to make sure we didn't say that. Um, Right, so everything, all this stuff down below, I'm going to get rid of. Yeah. Um, we don't need any of that. And then all that's left is just a restating of the bylaw as written. And then the maps, which aren't in this draft, because I plug them in the end. So I don't know if there's anything else we want to add. Otherwise, I think we close the hearing, we vote on these, and then I will update everything online. Yeah, I think so. I think we'd vote to adopt the guidelines as amended. I move we, we just vote to adopt this. the guidelines as amended. I second. All those in favor? Do we have to? We should because Janice is right and is remote. So Jane, I. Ruth, I. Deborah Flanagan, I. Dan, I. Dan, I. Okay. So that's all done. <laughs> you don't want to talk about solar for another hour? No. <laughs> and I mean, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. We only have east. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it on the west side. Um, I'd like to do the. <coughs> So we're going to so we'll close the hearing. And then I don't think for the, for the district, I don't know if there's anything else to discuss. Um, there's no new projects. Turns out the email that came through that deck is exempt unless you have a new project. I just have one question about 
windows to the town hall and the CPA funds, but do I close this out first? Um, yeah. Yeah, let's close the hearing. So we'll, <coughs> I don't know if we need to. I am Mr. Chief. Okay. I moved to close <laughs> I the moved hearing. to close the hearing. I think Jane should. Yeah, uh, she does. Because you're the at chair. At 721. I second. All right. And all in favor. All in favor. Jane, I. Ruth, I. I. Dan, I. Yeah, Deb, you still vote. Deborah, I. Janice, 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 I. Okay. And I'm never. Ever. We'll you buy know. you. We'll buy you. A That's okay. Memory and hands. Robert's <laughs> rules of order that yeah, none of us have. Not this Robert's rules either. The real ones. <laughs> I'm actually, well, you know what we do that, <laughs> and then it's like six months goes by, yeah. and then it's like, all right, what do I say again? Yeah. <laughs> so the windows, I can tell you where we're at. So that ultimately the goal would be to replace all the windows of town hall with proper historic things, because there's a preservation restriction on the building. Um, it's a little bit complicated. We have to have them. We have to get permission from the state. We have to design everything. So the intent was to ask for some design money from CPA at the November town meeting so that we can pay the people we need to pay to figure out the whole thing, put a whole package together. And then that needs to be submitted um, though by the 19th. It already, that's already been taken care of by oh, CPA. Right. It's just more. It's fairly new. Aren't these windows fairly new? Yeah, well, they were in the 90s. because They're Chris, in real rough shape. I remember when Chris Noonan, he was the chair of the well, some, commission. Some maybe up here are, but downstairs are still original wood windows, aren't they? No. Oh, in the okay. very basement, there may be a few. And I, it may not make sense to do. I mean, we could find out that this is an unaffordable project, but at least this gets all the data together. I, I, we're not asking for $100,000. I think we're going to need five or ten grand just to pay some consultants to come in and analyze everything. <laughs> and that's without the windows. Kathy started connected with, um, who is it, that Jade, Jade Mortimer with Heart, yeah, some Heart restoration Heart. company. Right. Um, I don't know whether she has them or not, though. I know she repairs them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. With, I think you're probably looking at buying modern replica replacements. Right, yeah. I don't think you're going to yeah, find so actual old, you know, old stock that fits. It'd be interesting fits. to know what happened to the ones and, that were taken out. But they would need to be, <clears throat> like, you know, pulled yeah. in the heat. Would they be any good? They see a little bit. Would they be modern? They'd have modern glass. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think, and it sounds like there might be grant money if you were on that last email from the woman from the state. Yeah. Um, but again, we have to have everything to apply for all that. I'm not, I'm not sure the rules and regulations about if they have to be wood or vinyl, but I know that they're making new vinyl stuff that is, you can't tell the difference if it's wood or not. So my, we my did, front door, you would think was wood. It's not. We I did know. Um, mm. the Anderson wood rights in my mm. house. So you can get like the 12, the 12, the six over six or whatever, however you want them. But so they actually wood though? The outside is the um, vinyl yeah. and then the inside is wood. But is it wood wood or is it just that wood laminate? It looks like it's wood. It's wood. I wonder if the that's what writes. Barry said. Looks well, like, I mean, we look them up. We have problems with our windows. The top comes down and the bottom comes down. So <laughs> I <those>. thought <laughs> in my, we would put a replacement window in one. It was in the bathroom actually. I wanted a Marvin because they, the mullions look yeah. more like the guy who did it put in a harvey which is a piece of crap a 600 dollars piece of junk um that's falling apart and the mullions are about this this wide so it's coming out well i can tell you it's going to be expensive no matter what there i know be i know it depends she though. said I, have you, I love them there's a she said she told me to talk to this paul holtz there's a massachusetts preservation projects fund which has a municipally owned building with a restriction on it, it'd be eligible to apply for. So, and the, the round starts in November, December. So I think if we can find out, it might be, you know, if we could get some of it funded. Oh, it's M that's MPPF. Okay. I think great. you couldn't, I think you wouldn't be able to use replacement windows though. No, well, that's the first question from the state is how to, what, what can we do? What can't we do? Right. And one of the main problems as we're having like with the records room as well, is getting anybody to come out and give you yeah. any kind of advice yeah. or any kind of ideas or anything, because unless you're gonna give them the job, they're not interested. 
and you well, don't know if you're going to give them the yeah, job because right. you don't How know can what you, you can do. Right. So they have like, to bid. I mean, it has to go out to bid anyway. Well, it has to go out to bid. So if someone comes and gives you the information and then you put out an RFP, then you've got to give it to, you might have to give it to somebody else. What are you What are you doing? So we, we have to start building in all this money to have people to come out and tell you what to do. I mean, this lady, Jade, um, you know, when Kathy said to her about coming out, she would come out and tell you what you need to do. Right. But she lives hours away and it's going to cost a lot of money to bring her out here just to see what we can do. So. Yeah. But I think, you know, I think it's worth spending a couple, you know, some money to invest in, come up with a plan. Yeah. And that way they can look at moving the next phase forward. You don't have a choice. Well, they're in those offices. They don't open anymore. The screens are all shot. They're in rough shape. Yeah. But what we did with the, the roof on the old library was we did send it out an RFP and people came and said what they were going to do. And right. We chose. Right. You know, well, ultimately, this will have to be an it. I think this is of a technical enough nature that you almost want to pay somebody to write the RFP, all the specs, the proper windows, blah, blah, blah. It's the same argument, you know, whatever, if we ever do anything next door, it's so involved that you really well, I mean, you need to pay some engineering. Well, I mean, we know historic architects. Greg yeah. Green is one. Philip Warbass is the other who did the yeah. shop. Yeah. Um, Try getting hold of Philip Warbass. Oh, really? Yeah, I've only called him like six times. Oh, no. Um, I mean, well, we, he may be ready to retire, but we, we had a Greg a, Green. Yeah, I mean, it's the same, you know, I think the conversation is to try and do something with the building next door. And we had talked to CPA, but I've been talking to Ellen, and I, I think that one maybe just needs to wait. wait we can well. focus on some other stuff, but yeah. it'd be nice to, again, so that I think you all know this, as part of the campus project, a ramp will fit on the front of that building. They, like, they showed how it would fit. So that solves your accessibility problem. You know, and assuming theoretically that could just become file storage, at least just what it would take to clean up, restore the inside, bring it back to what it was, a former church. And then we've got a space that can be used. But where's this? Next door, the old library, the first, the main floor. Oh, this That's just, yeah. Um, but again, because the preservation restriction, be everything involved, you really would need to have some money to just design it all. But I think we get enough projects on our hand that it maybe make more sense to table that right now and focus on other stuff. This is more important. I mean, they're still working on this building. They're still working on the campus. Um, One step at a time. Need a fire alarm next door, apparently. So. All right. Um, I don't know if there was anything else for. Not for this. Oh, for the historic commission, we had actually. There's a couple CPA things just to update everyone on. Do you too, want to close but the? Are you guys good? Well, we should set a meeting, meeting date. And just um, well, we have the hearing for November 3rd at 6. So um, Dave, what is it today? Let me just close my Menden thing. Is that a Thursday? We had talked about another district hearing, another district meeting. I don't remember when. Um, also, there were the minutes that. Yeah, I get to send an email. If everybody could just pick a couple meetings, we've got to get caught up on minutes. I'll just, I'll make a list. I, the stuff you've been sending me now, I can clean those up. Um, Are those our minutes? Um, there was a partial joint meeting with the local oh. district. That was from me. That was well, from you. Yeah. Oh, I sent you notes and then. Yeah, so I can, we get, but there's a bunch of old stuff that somebody just has to watch some videos. Um, did we talk about a meeting date? Were we just going to stick to Mondays again? That third Monday, since the select board don't need it anymore. I just have I just have a commission on my calendar. Are you doing the third? Aren't you doing the? No, not Mondays anymore. They're going to stay Wednesdays. Board? Apparently, we're back to Wednesdays. You do? <laughs> I don't have anything. Oh in my lord! Can we go back to Mondays then? <laughs> I think I think I feel like we talked about. It. I don't remember. Better than. Friday. Just the only uh, only planning board is the only one you pretend with them. Yeah, which which and is, they do first and third, right? Yeah, but I so Nick Nick talked to Ellen and they coordinated next door. So now we have better access. She's got a key card that we can check out, so we've got better access to the room next door. So we could go out tomorrow. So we we could have meetings. One of you Monday the seventeenth. Hey. Um, so, but I don't know if we need to meet. Or just skip it and go right to the hearing. You know. See if something comes. I mean, why don't we tentatively have that date and see if something comes along? Because if there's a project, we don't want to make somebody wait. 
I have the commission on my calendar on the 17th, October but that could be a play. Actually, I have them on next Monday too, yeah. but Tentatively it's too late to post. October 17th at what time? Um, well, if the commission was doing seven, planning board's not that night. Okay. They're the second and fourth. Oh, okay. And we're the and the master plan's the first, and we're the third. Right. So but it doesn't matter. Let's just say tentatively the 17th at 6 p.m. What yeah. Uh, 6 p.m. Six. And then if something if something comes through or not. So we're doing 17th at 7, right? Right. And then the hearing on the 3rd, which is just the district. Unless, I mean, commission can attend. I don't know if we need to post it. Does the district have any concern about the Route 16 project that cuts through the district? Oh, yeah. <coughs> well, they've notified. I'd like to hear it. Hear what if they the, have to say. Well, about September 22nd. Yeah, so they're going to have a Zoom meeting, yeah. I think. Right. Oh, yeah, no, I just, oh, yeah, they were going to have yeah. that Zoom meeting, but again, they, that section is Are they gonna put a, a light. We should add us at the top of Maple. For the traffic coming up, you'll turn on to six, you'll turn into 16 like I that. like Providence Street. Well, kind of. I mean, we don't have a light there, but. Nice I mean, sidewalk uh, and a crosswalk. Kind, yeah, it used like to be that. just, yeah. And, yeah, and then I believe there's sidewalks all the way. Mm -hmm. um, so be a light there, but when you come down Maple, the dive lane will still be there. They're going to adjust Emerson to only align with Washington. Mm -hmm. And they're not moving the not memorial touching anymore. touching any memorials except the Brothers of the Brush one, which is not a... Right. Which so they they're know not they're doing the Civil that. War. The are they are putting just, a light on Washington? At the end nope. of Washington? So how are they going to solve that problem of people getting were... out of Washington and Emerson? So that light that were... at Maple... I believe should alleviate that pressure because you'll have you'll now have the light stop if there so what what it will be is what about so, what about all the kids who cross from washington down into hood plaza don't you think they should do something there there's going to be a crosswalk in front of the rotary that's proposed or the crosswalk but be like, like, so they could just get flat. Yeah, I was going to say, what good is a crosswalk? Or like, a, or like really? maybe like a proposal. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. We've gone too far. I okay. All right, district. do the light first. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> That's irrelevant. The rotary is a proposal on top of what there's already been. You won't see the rotary in. Got it. So in, that's. Although until that's they're working approved. with with MassDOT. So okay. although it's not on this on this set of plans, we're still four years away or five years away from this actually happening. Right? Uh, or three at least. I think it's a five year total plan. So maybe three years away from them. So if we, if we kind of go to the Hopedale line, they're, they're adding in a turn lane of some sort to alleviate the pressure into the uh, drive-in uh, that backs that traffic up all the way up to, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. the hospital. So then you have the next stop is the light here at the top of the hill, which will be a much broader intersection with turn lanes, turn lights, all that, all that jazz, um, and uh, crosswalks, and working crosswalk buttons that sometimes I see those don't work. Next up is the top of Maple, <clears throat> Emerson, everything. that whole piece kind of plays into conjunction with that light. So if you're, if the light's red as you come to, to uh, the top of Maple, well now you, you that traffic is stopped. Now we don't have traffic coming out of Maple, but that gives you time to make that cross or make your turns onto, what, onto uh, Route 16. But that's only if you're coming up Maple. What about yeah. you just coming up Hastings? Because I mean, it's, yeah, well, when you're sitting in Washington, 16. turning left, yeah. You can actually see the traffic coming up Maple. <laughs> you can't see them coming around the corner on Hastings doing 90. But I think you're saying they're going to be stopped. They're going to be at a red light now. You're going to be at a red light. You'll the red see light the red light. At the top of, so it's not just um, Maple, Maple, it's Hastings and Maple. It's that it's whole section. It's a four-way. So there's it's going to... It's a light. It's a four-way so light. You have to stop the traffic to let the people come out of Maple. Yeah. So you have to stop the traffic coming both ways. So the light, and Why you'll have they... to stop coming up Route 16 also? Absolutely. Wouldn't okay. it make more sense? Okay. okay. That's what I meant. Maple maple one one so way. Maple. if those two are both stopped, then the traffic can come out of Emerson and Washington? Yeah, so as that traffic stops, your stop lines will be. So you can't block the intersection, although people don't realize that. Yeah, I know. Right? So you have to put a stop line uh, on the other side of, of, of uh, on 16. Yeah, coming up. Eastbound, you put a stop line. Or the, what they do is that sometimes they paint those X's. Let's say the crosshatch thing. So you know, don't park it, right? 
Okay, so that as that light turns red, that traffic flow is going to slow down. It will have stop. That will allow that alleviate that pressure for Washington and Emerson to then make those turns or cross them up. As I I travel, I generally leave my house and come down Washington Street because it's a great street and I want to see how much pressure is there. So I can take it every day to see. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, why did you do this? Yeah, I'm just going across the Emerson. <laughs> Yeah, because it can, you can't yeah. see you can't get, that. that no. But they're, they're lining them up. That's part of it. They're going to well, like, so fix Emerson all Emerson and Washington are already lined up. Yeah. Right. They're going to move. They're, they're going to fix. Of Emerson that brings yeah. Them you know how like the yeah. boats of Rush Island in the middle, they just go straight. Like you that's won't have cars so all over. So there's going to be a crosswalk there. There'll be a crosswalk at every light. But you're, you just said there's not a light. So they'd have to walk 10 feet down, down the road, I think, right? Go down to the light, cross over, and then come back up to get to the foot plaza. So, so they walk down Washington, then they go all the way down to the North Ave intersection? No. no. The light at Maple Street. <laughs> right here, Deb. How does that help traffic Just that, coming? Just that, I think. Down uh, 16. I didn't realize there was a light the, at Maple. I mean, yeah, that's what he's saying. There's a light. Uh, they're gonna, they're the gonna, light there's a light at Maple. Uh, so coming we, down 16, yeah. you're still going to have to stop because the light will be red. Stop at Washington. No, you're not going to be stopping well, at stop Washington. You're going to be Maple. stopping before then at Maple. So if you're turning so, left out of Washington, you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You're going to block. Then you're going to be I'm blocking sorry. the you intersection. Have, you have right there. I don't have any plans. I'm There's sorry. nothing available. We're going up. I have a map. Up and around. Like I have this. I think it's actually at Washington and Emerson now that I think. About yeah, it. that's where. Up. That's where they had said originally. They're coming up around. Right. I don't think the state posted anything, did they? So you're going to come up. Yeah, I might have. I have, I have, I have a preliminary sketch. They're going to get rid of. But I get, they're going to have this all on the 22nd oh, to stuff. go through it all. Okay, but we want to get. Whatever it was, I remember involved. seeing it. It was pretty good. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just sort of yeah, surprised that they did not just make Maple a one-way. Only because. That's be not up to them. That's up to us. Well, that's not really true because I remember when uh, Chief Horn. Wanted to make that one way, and the state said no because it empties because, onto the state highway. They, well, they, they have jurisdiction right because on, the the tractor trailer trucks didn't have enough room to turn oh, at the light on North Avenue and Main Street. Maybe that's that's an argument, but that's now going to be fixed. It will be on the internet. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's going to be fixed. So why not make Maple a one-way street? Uh, so for a long time, you're not going to be able to get out of Washington Street <laughs> or Emerson. For a long time now, you're not going to be able to get out of there, right? This has the light at, at Maple Street, but this is, very, this is two years out of date now. So I would... I do, too. I like rotaries myself. Roundabouts. I like one right here. I like roundabouts. I don't know whether at the end of Millville. I mean, I'll never get out of Millville Street. I'm going to be going down Kelly You know what? I realize, though... Well, I would think that setup good. now, it's almost a rotary. You're coming out at a yield. The only difference is the 16 people go straight through, but you already have to kind of wait and merge in. So this just formalizes it. Well, yeah. whole, you so know. well unless you could have a roundabout there easily yeah. for yeah, you could. for Washington. Yeah. Yeah. That and one I think that would up. be. Yeah. And then you could have oh. a light further up. People would I build I don't build lights and I it would fix here. That would be the solution well, people, for this. Like I said, it's great if people yeah. know how to use them. I like them myself. Go to, go to Westboro. Yeah. I mean, right. <laughs> that's like taking your yeah. life into your hands. That's a big rotary. It's yeah. like yeah. Kelly Square in Worcester. It's a shape, too. And, well, you know, no one knows, but they just go, they go straight. And, yeah. What is this, Kelly? I hope Square. no one hits me. Yeah. They fixed Kelly Square, but I, yeah, they I, I got to say, I did. <laughs> no, I, I, like I, 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 I was fun. I like you. Yeah. I, I, I went crazy. I was like, what am I supposed to do? Here? I'm so used to just like close my eyes and go. And then and you know what people nine. still do. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. I like the old Kelly like Square too. I used to think yeah. it was yeah. so. <laughs> challenge. challenge. And I was saying to my son, I said, because nobody around here remembers this, but if you knew Worcester, down at the other end of Worcester, where the boys club was, where the police station yep. is now, yep. well, all the streets used to converge down there. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but you had the railroad tracks there. And at five o'clock at night, the, the train came through like it did at Framingham. Yep. Yep. And it was, <laughs> but everybody seemed to make it. Well, even now coming down that, as you come off 290 and you're trying to go over to Salisbury Street. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. Fun. Yeah, yes, right. You're right. And you got to be sure you're in the right 
lane of traffic there to turn up Grove. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. Rotaries are the best traffic mm. control. Yeah, I think so too. People, people have to slow down. Right. When we spoke to John about the one further up, he was, oh, well, there's going to be traffic lights on it and stop signs. Well, you don't have traffic lights no. and stop signs on a rotary. No. no. Unless you're in the UK. Unless you're in the UK. Well, they, they do that there, yeah. They do, because we just like to challenge people that don't know how to use rotary. Like I yeah. noticed they've got one in Milbury now. When you come off of 146 to go into Milbury Centre, yeah. yep. they've got yep. one right there, yep. and that seems yep. to... Yep. Exactly right. Oh, yep. okay, yeah. So, and and so why couldn't you put two? Do we have here? anything else, sir? Because we still historic still has business. Yes, you know, historic needs to finish up. Well. We need to we'll just finish that one item. I uh, don't think I we don't have, have anything else. Oh, that's okay. Maybe they did. I just saw them. Yeah. Because they were they weren't ready yet. Maybe you dreamt about that. Thinking how you're going to get out of Washington. Let me look again. If it wasn't on the website, it only had real pruning and stuff. Yeah, I think we're good with that. All right. Well, we're probably off topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, meeting closes at seven. And then we just commission just has to vote on minutes and then a limb ran to the bathroom. But and Dan, if you give me access to a couple, I mean, you know what? I just I haven't I have to make how, a list of everything. You know how good I am so it's in one place. Computer. I just haven't had the time to look so, at it yet. There you go. Oh, well, it won't um, be. Um, actually, I'm not as bad as some people like my husband, but anyway. <laughs> um, sometimes I think I've got it, and then all of a sudden, yeah, um, something yeah. new. Yeah, I know. So just yeah. but. Yeah. If he, I will do the minutes of a couple of them, and then I just email them to Ellen. Exactly. No, to me. We have to, to vote you. on them. Okay. All right. But I have to make a list. I just haven't had to. Okay. Time to deal with any of that because we're still kept getting caught up on the summer here. And then. Um, How long did it take you to clean the park up? Actually, it was. To their credit, they came back and picked up all the trash and did. It was a very. It was a very good event. Good. Um, I think next year we probably should look at hiring some people to handle trash, like the you know the day of, you know, or maybe we can bring back some of the summer camp kids and just say we'll pay you to run around and. And lower the decibel of the band. And huh? Oh, God. It was. You know what? That first band for some reason was so loud. The other ones weren't. I mean, I was trying to talk to Diane Harper, and she said, I already talked to Ronnie. They turned it down. I said, really? Because no, that that first band was very loud. The second one, the other ones were not as crazy. Well, I could hear them in my house, but yeah. I'm practically across the street. No, it was. Uh, finish ours? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to, uh, the minutes, and then talk about the demo delay. And, I so I know Kathy did. Um, did everybody get a chance to read the minutes? Yes. Okay. Did anybody have anything that they needed to add or change for the minutes? I did. Janice? This here. I don't know where the boys go. I have to read them. I'll do it right now. Okay. Okay. So. Two, three, four, now we get Janice, okay. So it's 7.45. So we're voting on the minutes or no? Yeah, we're just, Janice is just reading okay. them now. Right. Um, so then, let me pull it up in viewpoint. Um, you read them, Dan? Yep. So I can't make a motion. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, to I'll them? move to approve the minutes. Of whatever that meeting date was, August thirteenth. Then what I'll do is I'll amend that from um, unapproved to approved, and then I'll send you a PDF of it so you can. Well, you said it. if all that has to be done is this date, I'll do it. And right I sent now. it to you in words. So. Yeah. Okay, Dan made the motion to approve the minutes. Connie, can you second? I'll second it. Okay. Kathy did tell me that she approved them, but does she have to actually vote? Nope. We just okay. a quorum of the board has to vote, so we have okay. a quorum. So I, Documents. I'm I. Store Dana. Did you read them, Jans. Um, uh, they were sent. I sent them to you this afternoon. 
Yeah. Yep. I don't know why you don't get. Um, Are you sending them to her? You're not using her personal email. That's why she doesn't get her town email. No, I'm sending it to her personal email. I don't do. I don't see her on this. She's only. I've only got one email for Janice. I don't. I don't. I don't see it. Let's chat after the meeting about okay. that. All right. We I just sent them again after the meeting. We have enough people to. I just sent them again to Janice. Okay. Thank you. I got him. Let's let's have a yeah. Um. Okay. okay. All right, we'll figure that one out. Um, okay, so the motion is approved. Connie second. Uh, Janice, okay, we'll get them after. Kathy said yes. But if we don't have a quorum to we vote on them, it then we're we not voting on okay. them. So if, Jan if, if she's not ready to vote, then just never mind. Me, me, okay, me, 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 she's leaving. Okay, Janice, yeah, yeah if you can just run through them. They're, they're very short. Um, we didn't have any more um, no demo requests, right? No, and I st I haven't had time. Eventually, I will change this over to flag all these properties properly. Okay. But we're getting you know sick and tired of getting all the weather sealing because they all they do a permit for weather sealing, but they put it in this other. And other gets flagged because we had an issue previously, oh. but eventually I'm going to flag each individual property as the ones we care about, and then okay. we won't have to deal with that. Okay. Have you okay, had any more? Okay, Janice said okay. Okay, so let yeah we oh yeah we Sorry. could probably just update. Okay, on that. so um, the minutes then are unanimously approved. Great. Or approved by quorum. Oh. As Jan, she's not here, and Dan, then you can post them, right? Yep. Okay, so we are up to date on minutes. Um, did you have any more people contact you that will need to be removed or? Yes, so I have sent you all a link to a Google Sheet. There are currently um, 18, there are currently 16, 15 other properties that are pending for this hearing on December 15th. Okay. There was another one, an email just came through this afternoon that I applied to her and said she send me an email with the info because she couldn't figure out the online thing like just give us something um i think it'd be helpful i'll resend this link i've tried to include i don't think i got that it was a while ago okay i i tried to include any notes or links to anything i think it'd be helpful if everybody went through looked at each property and yep. like made up their own determination and then we can come to the meeting you know i think the majority of them are properties that are similar to the one we just talked about 19 you know 1949 yep. nothing special there are one or two that i would personally feel are you know 1800th house that you know but again we got to read through them and make well, the determination I, I, I think again you know maybe what if we can get if you can send me that link with all those yep. on there if there are any that are 1800s or something maybe i can call the owner just to make sure that they understand what this is and this is not a you know you can't talk you you can't right. sell your house kind of deal i did so i have updated the form when you fill the form out there's like a whole paragraph that pops up this because the first initial applications was like i don't want my information on the list i'm like no 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 that's not that's there not what no this is it's like literally your address right but okay. i updated the form to add some explanation of what this is what it's about um but yeah, I think it'd be good if there's any that you think, I mean, any, if there's any you feel are worth reaching out to, it would be good to do that. I mean, yep. um, the one that was the part, I talked to one person in an 1800s home, but they have not formally applied. I would leave that one alone. Um, but there is another one that came through in 19, 1900. That might be a typo. Anyway, I'll send it to you again. But yeah, so that, so that will be December 15th. Um, I will probably put everything in the mail no later than December 1st. I've automated all the hearing notices. So I just got to print everything out. I'll let you know. We might want a couple of people to help stuff envelopes. Yep. I didn't really think that through. There was a lot of mailing with the district and this other thing. So, 
That's all right. Poor Gene. We're going to need like 37 of Butters lists. But okay. anywho. Um, yeah, so then. Oh, so is there anything else that, so do we just want to talk about the? Yeah, so the other issue is um, that is, falls under the 48 hour that came in at the last minute yeah. is uh, 23 Oxbridge Road. I got a phone call from Mr. Quirk, who is wondering where his permit is, and he's ready to tear the house down. And I was a little confused and basically said, listen, this is, you know, this got to go back to the commission. Right. Um, I, I, don't, I can't make any decision on my own. Unfortunately, I think, I don't know. So he's looking. You don't have an application. But so this this fell under the old system. He came to us with an application for demolition delay. We talked about it at a meeting. We had some discussion, and I think there was question about options, and he was basically in no rush. So he said he would delay he until... said he was going to come to our meeting on January the 4th. Right. And, and at that point, we were going to discuss any other options that we had other than tearing the house down. Right. I sent him a letter in December, um, which we got, and, and inviting him to the meeting on the 4th that we needed to discuss it and any other options that there may be. I never got any response or anything. We had our meeting on the 4th. Um, I then sent another letter after the fourth saying we had our meeting. You didn't show up. Um, and, you know, it's, if you could let because we wanted to go in and photograph the property and actually go in and have a look at the inside of the property. And he told us that it was rented and that we couldn't go in. Right. Um, and then we have not heard a, a dicky bird since then. And that was a long time ago. I mean, that's like nine months ago. Right. So, you know, I, I get the fact that he wants to tear it down now and he probably has plans to do that, but we still have to stick to the format. I mean, he, yeah. he's never contacted us about doing photographs. He's never talked to us about going in there. He's never talked to us about any other possibilities of saving that property. At this point, you know, I mean, we could definitely put like a six months delay on it, which I know wouldn't be ha he wouldn't be happy about. Well, I think at this point, the applicant's position is that he's effectively already waited the six months and that we have no further jurisdiction to hold it up. Yeah, we um, do, because it said it in the letter. Yes, but I, in the last letter I that I wrote yeah. to him. Um, hold on. I just I don't know. I, th I do think I mean, I get and I'm not necessarily taking anybody's side. I just wonder. I'm not sure I see the outcome of this. You know, I think we're going to, I think we're going to end up in a meeting with a whole bunch of lawyers. And I don't know if that's helpful. I said to him, we are still trying to contact you regarding access to your rental property at 23 Uxbridge Road. We held our monthly historical commission meeting on the third, ready to discuss the matter with you. We obviously very much look forward to discussing possibilities with you for the property. We have another meeting scheduled on January the 17th at 7 p.m. if you are available. If you're not able to join us, we will put your application on hold until such time as we can schedule a new meeting with you. That was on January the 11th. You don't then come back after eight months and say, all right, well, now I want to tear it down. You know, I mean. I agree with you. I mean, I think we're going to have to handle this one very carefully. We're probably going to need to involve Cindy. My, I'm wondering if we should at this point schedule a hearing. That's where we're at. I mean, that the, applic the applicant's argument is going to be potentially that We've missed our statutory deadlines. We're saying no. We agreed to put we it on hold because it says right. there: if you don't join us on the seventeenth of January, your application's on hold. Right, but if the problem is what the bylaw says. Hmm? With it's what the bylaw says. So within ten days, you know this. It's the old bylaw, so it's all the confusing whatever. But I believe no more than twenty days after the commission's determination that is significant. The application applicant shall submit a five copies of a demolition plan, which we didn't get. Which we got right. We got part of that, um, and it also somewhere else in here says that if that we can agree in writing to hang on. Somewhere in here it says that that we can agree in writing to extend the date. I thought. Which we did. 
the application. Well, I mean, he didn't agree because he didn't acknowledge either of my letters. But we, I mean, it clearly says there, if you can't join us on the 17th, which was two weeks after the first meeting he was invited to, we'll put your application on hold. He never yeah. came back to us, Stan. I mean, what are we supposed to do? I, Lynn, I, Lynn, yeah. Lynn, did, Lynn, did, Lynn did, did you send did you, did you did you that, 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 that by? Yes, both of them. Well, there you, there you go. I mean, I just, I guess my, my thought is what's the outcome we hope to achieve? And is there any benefit by having, you know, a whole bunch of very contentious meetings with lawyers making all sorts well, of we, accusations? What's so the point? My point there is we, we don't do all know. That. We don't know if we want to save that house because we've never been allowed inside to see it. Right. I heard through the grapevine that the reason that he wanted to tear it down is not anything to do with the house, but it's the fact that the septic is gone. That's why he can't have anybody in there and he can't sell it. Well, you can see, yeah. So we can replace the septic, but it, right? Why would you do that for a house that for you're house not going to save? Tear down anyway and sell. Well, that, if that's the case, should we schedule a hearing on this and see how that goes? I mean, I, I just my fear is that we're the response potential, and maybe we need to set up an executive session to talk. Although there's no exact no legal action has been threatened, so we can't. I just my fear is that we're going to get a response that basically says, "This is how I feel." If you disagree, you're going to need to get some sort of injunction to stop it. And I think when we go to take those actions, we're going to not get the support to take those actions. So I don't know how to proceed on this one without starting World War Three. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, if the, the ultimate is, this goal, was, this was all done. Yeah, under the old right, which was if all of a sudden now, I mean, anybody that's ever wanted to take a house down can now take it down and say, oh, I didn't get that letter. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. What's the point of us even doing this? We might just as well let everybody, you know, pull anything down. I mean, we actually stuck to the rules here. Well, according to the rules, we had a we had a meeting. I, I, I guess this is the big question. We made a determination that the property was significant. Mm -hmm. Did we? Is that what we voted on? Yep. I'd have to verify that. I'm At that sure point, it December. It was, hang on, yeah, December 18th. So what I think the minutes we are posted. We said at that, at that meeting that the property was significant. Right. That we wanted to find an alternative to demolition. But we also, but we were told that the house was riddled with mold and it had beams this and rotting this oh, and all this kind of problems with the house. So we actually said, well, can we get in to see the house? So he said, well, I'll give you until the beginning of the new year to come up with proposals. 10, 18, so we said, okay, 21. we'll come back to us on January 3rd. He didn't. So then we sent him the letter and then we said, come back on the 17th and he didn't. So, uh, you know, we don't know what's happening with the house. We haven't been able to get in. For all we know, it's been sitting there for nine months, rotting into the ground, right. which is demolition by neglect. Which isn't regulated under the old the bylaw. That this under is governed the old by. Bylaw, right. So looking at this, I'm just looking. I just want to. I, I we just have to be very, very careful mm -hmm. that we have followed every step of this process to the T. Because if there's any loophole, it will be exploited. Right. And we will be, you know, fighting a huge fight. The commission asked the owner to consider. Right. So I mean, I guess. I feel like didn't we vote at a later meeting? Or no, I think at a later meeting we discussed and basically said we haven't heard any follow up and we would consider the matter tabled until such time as it comes back to us, right? Yes. Um, yes. I mean, I don't know. I think so. I don't know if somebody else wants to make contact. I personally don't really want to deal with this. I don't. I, have, I, really I don't, don't have the position. I don't have the position. Should interested I, in getting yelled at? Should and, I call Cindy? We could I mean, call we her and ask her that. for some advice on how. I mean, I think I think we should schedule a hearing on this property because at this point, ultimately, that's what it's going to come down to. Whether we do it now or we do it in after we, you know, they don't have to let us into the property. None of that is is required. It's all just a courtesy, you know. But I'm also kind of thinking. It sounds like. I mean, I don't know if we found any alternatives. I think the hope is that the applicant might be able to design something that would incorporate that building. But I don't know if that's feasible or of interest you know so maybe it would be make sense to just schedule it schedule a hearing invite them to the hearing and say you know let's talk about this do we need to have a hearing we can't have a meeting it's got to be a public hearing 
We can. I mean, well, so again, I'm just looking at the process that's outlined specifically in the bylaw that we necessarily can't supersede. I'm looking at the old bylaw. So we had 20 days to make a significance determination. I'll have to go back and verify that that was done. I, I'm thinking it was. Then we met. Um, when was this even submitted to us? Hang on, I got 1,200 things open. This initial application was October of 21. So we met on this date, this date. Oh, why are these Word documents? Oh, I hate that. And I'm probably the one to put them on here. Um, demolition requests. We agreed to meet on October 18th. Um, this is the minutes of October 18th. It was discussed, blah, blah, blah. Requested to view it. He would need time to set something up, evaluate the property, consider alternatives, do not see a viable option. Would like to, the owner said he had some time, would like to revisit the matter at the first meeting in January. Right. So it sounds like we never actually made the determination on significance because we agreed to, to table everything, and that's where it got left off. So then we probably need, I mean, You're I think. You're reading our minutes there? I'm looking at our minutes. I'm just trying to think this through on how, I mean, I think ultimately we need to come up with a plan on what the next steps are. So if we, you know, feel that it's significant, I might even, I wasn't on the agenda, so we probably shouldn't be voting on that stuff tonight, but we probably need to meet to talk about that and then set a hearing date, which is the next step, which has to be done as soon, once we make a determination. I thought we already made the determination on the house. I don't, I'd have to look at later minutes. Maybe we voted at a later meeting. But I, again, I my my initial reading, and maybe if this is a conversation for Cindy, my initial reading of this is that we tabled that determination in conjunction with the owner. Um, it was in the minutes of December. So now let's go to 22. It, it has to be before December because December we said that we were going to email Jimmy Quirk and we can't make an informed decision. Okay, it says here, meeting 12-6-21, email Jimmy Quirk, can't make an informed decision. So I emailed Jimmy Quirk and I should have that at the, um, because I was told he doesn't do town email. I actually sent it to New England Steak and Seafood. Well, I'm just I'm looking through so January so now in in January again we're hoping to discuss we're hoping to discuss um, I seem to recall there being a specific meeting that we said at this point we've had no feedback and we'll consider this matter tabled until we hear back um, and it may have not you know, I'll have to go back and watch recordings but I guess either way well that, that was on one eleven and Lynn's letter right. Um, you know, so he reached back out. So at this point now, we need to make it a significant determination if we're starting from that point. So we need to have at the next meeting, this item should be on the agenda to determine its significance and then set a hearing date, assuming we find it significant. Um, if that's the direction we want to go, I think we and should probably put all that in writing. Yeah, and you sent an email. We 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 got that. He only sent one email, one photograph. And you had said we can discuss. This was in um, October, October 4th, 2021. You sent an email that said, hi, everyone. We can certainly discuss the application, but I'm not sure if we're ready to discuss the actual demolition issue. I see the application, but it doesn't seem to have photos attached. Well, it only has one. And that was when he sent it through. He actually sent it through at 1223 on the morning of the 4th, which was our meeting, which was when it was discussed. Right. Well, we said, that I believe on the, in that meeting, we specifically discussed, let's put this on the agenda for, so it's properly on the agenda. Right. Um, but either way, I think at this point, then, we need to get this on an agenda for a meeting to make a determination, ASAP, be prepared for, you know, whatever, and then... You know, I, I think, unfortunately, 
unless somebody has some that. I mean, he, he did say he's still certainly open to having it moved if we could find somebody interested in it, but he doesn't think well, it's viable. We're going to contact like the affordable housing people. Yeah, the problem is where do you put it? So we'd have to buy land or have a lot. Have we, we got have. any lot? What about down by the new, um, by the senior center? That's a whole engineered project. They're not, you can't put a lot down there, a house down there. Do we have any other lots? Not you know really what? that I'm aware of, but some the problem is to pay. I mean, I don't know if affordable housing could pay to move it, if that would be viable. Um, you know, if there's somewhere land to do that, so I don't know. I know that we had discussed that. I don't know. Um, you know, we had discussed moving it before, um, but we had then said, if I remember rightly. We can't make a determination or any plan to move it until we've been inside and seen it. And if that still stands to me right now, if we if we make all these plans to move it and then we go and right. actually finally get in to see the property and it is full of mold or there are beams that are broken or it's not structurally sound. I mean, we can't do any of that until we see the house. Right. I just I think, you know. I think the applicant's position is going to be like none of that's mandated in the bylaw. And I think, I don't know, part of me thinks the best outcome we're going to get here is we're going to wait nine months and then it'll be demolished in nine months and a day. And I don't know, if, you know, unless some, unless there's some fantastic option to try and preserve this or can discuss or move it if it's worth moving, you know, or if it can be used as part of the development, but I don't, you know, I don't know what the plans are. Well, as part of the Washington Street? No, as part of whatever this individual wants to do with this property, but it sounds like they he wanted to have tear a it down. Building. Right. There was no, there was so, no real discussion on that. I don't know. Um, you know, maybe I know Kathy has had some conversations. Maybe she knows more. She's had conversations with him. I don't know if it was before or after we had discussed all this. It may have been way back then. But okay, so Kathy is like she's away for the weekend. Yeah. So why don't I talk to Kathy on Monday? Which house is this? If she's back, this which I think she no. is. Um, I, if I talk to Kathy on Monday and see if she knows anything more, I'll give Cindy a call and see what Cindy's position is on this. Um, yeah, I mean, look through everything. I mean, I don't, you know. I don't know. I think yeah, everybody should follow the rules, but at the same time, I mean, we got to make more, sure he's on the planning board. He's been around long enough. He knows all of these these things. I, I'll talk to Cindy. I'll talk to Kathy, and I'll email everybody what you know the consensus is. And if Cindy thinks that we need to hold a public hearing rather than just a regular meeting, then I think we got to do that. I mean, he's not probably. I mean, he probably wants to take it down right this minute because he doesn't want to wait till the weather turns. Well, either way, I think whether we already determined it was significant or whether we're going to, we would then hold a hearing anyway. Mm -hmm. We would then consider a delay. Um, that's right. really all. That's the only options available to us. Right. So, you know, okay. whether any of those options are even worth it, I, you know, that's something we'll have to talk about. Yeah, because we can't make a decision without being in a meeting or right. public hearing of but some at least kind. gather some information on what the next step should be here mm -hmm. you know i don't think the the assertion that the time has passed you know i don't think is accurate no but i also think you know if somebody wanted to perhaps reach out and explain or maybe would see what she says and let us know but yeah we need to let him know what the next step is okay you see honestly dan the other thing is you know he should not be calling you. Well, he's, what happened is he called me because my name is on the record that's held up in the in the system. Right. So but my, he should have called I, me because my name is on the not only am I the chair, but my name is also on the letters that we sent him on behalf of the commission. Yeah. Well, I can. I'll get. I can give you his number if you want to. No, give that's fine. Thank you. That let me let me talk to Cindy see what she says and Kathy. And how to close Does this anybody out? have any no. other ideas of how we can handle this better? Ah. Uh, uh. Can I? Can I? Can I, can I yeah. Something? Yeah. Um, um, I I think I we have to, as Dan says, to follow the rules uh, of the old bylaws, and 
follow that structure. But what my comment was, if we did decide it was significant, I'm want, and I know moving a house is expensive, but I'm wondering if an option might be to move it down on, on the Trask Road and as a temporary measure to then see if it could go somewhere else. So that's fairly level, you know, where that road um, kind of ends to, beyond the, tra the Trask House. Maybe it could be put on a flatbed or something and put down there, or could it go on the town land where the community garden is or where Gary Smith was thinking of putting up the agricultural museum? We so, don't want that. Yeah, that's the town I, on that lot. No, it was oh, returned. Okay. It was returned to Gannett so they could do that agricultural center. Oh, all right. I thought the town yeah. was still on that. But that next lot where they have the community garden is that town land? None of it is. None of it is. Oh, okay. It's all thought, part of Gary's but thing. But yeah, task, I get your point. The task property is ours, right? The question is, how would you fund that moving the property? Yeah, I mean, it is expensive to move a building. Yeah. But in a, that's from one end of town to the other. So what is that? Four miles plus going down a steep hill. But anyways, they have to shore up the house and everything to even move it. But it wouldn't work to go up in the field at Trask because it's kind of really unlevel. But the, the where the old road is, it could just be parked in there. If it's town land, it, it, nobody sees it from the street to be an eyesore. It would be a holding pattern to then hope that either could be moved to a affordable housing development or what. But I think we have to proceed carefully because we also don't want another building that we have to maintain that we can't do anything with, you know. Right. And like I said, the problem is, Connie, if we haven't been in there, which we haven't, no. we don't know if it's in any condition to move. Right. Well, this is like if we do get a chance to go in and see it. Now, maybe we don't have maybe we don't have rights to go in. Maybe that's based on if the homeowner wants to allow it under those old right. bylaws. So then we don't really have a choice then. Right. Um, and do you want to move an old building that may, may have to be shored up so much you're going to cost more to try to move it than um, to take it down. But, um, but it's all, that's just an idea I had. Yeah. No, and it's a good one because that's what we were thinking of before, you know, seeing if there was anywhere we could move it. But but it came back again to that whole situation of, yeah, it would be great if we could find somewhere to move it to because we thought of maybe the land by the museum. Maybe mm -hmm. if there was land there that we could put it on or do something. Right. With. But we don't know if it's even viable to move. So yeah. we're at that stalemate here where, yeah, we don't want to lose the house. We'd like to move it. We know it's expensive, but we don't know what the condition is. We don't know if it would, you know, you'd have to spend like $100,000 putting a foundation in. We have no idea. Right. And that's my problem with this. Yeah. Yeah. But I also don't want to lose that lovely little house. I know. So, it's a beautiful yeah. little house. Um. <laughs> Uh, well, if you move it, eventually it's going to have to go somewhere where you put it put it on a foundation. They'd be putting it on I beams and shoring it up to move it, right? And then, um, yeah. then it would have to be moved yet again mm -hmm. to be put on a foundation. So yeah. it, it it's a cost it's a costly. Um, we couldn't use CPA funds, could we, Dan? Um, I mean, you could. I think you know it has to go to town meeting. Mm -hmm. So I think the f first question that the voter is going to ask is, you know, what are you going to do with what it? What are we doing with what it? Do you I, you know, I think ideally you would use affordable housing money to move it and renovate it and flip it as an affordable unit. That would probably be the cleanest solution. Mm -hmm. That it could be basically fixed up and then and de and then permanently deed restricted. So even in the future, when it's sold, it's it's at that affordable price. The question is, it, is just is it, where. Is it worth talking? Who who runs affordable housing? Bill McHenry. So at this point, we have literally three days to submit an article for November, and then the next opportunity is May. You know, and I don't. Again, I don't know what the applicant's plans are. If you know, I think you know part of it is he just wants to not have it hanging over his head. Right. So I don't. You know. 
I would assume that the intent is to develop that in conjunction with future proposed developments in that this area and the work on the road. So we don't even have a town crier that we happen, can advertise it in. Won't happen till 2024. Mm. So there may still be some time, but I think you know that we'd have to really be able to move this along and come up with a concrete proposal that could be put before voters in May. I don't personally. I don't think I don't see anyone supporting us stockpiling that house. It ha I think it has to have a location. Yeah, right. I don't think the voters, even though it makes sense, I don't think the voters would approve that. That cobbler's knob um, development over on Providence Street. Um, are there any that were, you know, developments that were made for um, affordable housing that have any lots that haven't been developed that we that they might want a house like that? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. All right. The problem is nobody wants an affordable house because you don't make any money on it. Right. I mean, the town. And the town doesn't want to be landlords either. Right. The town doesn't have right. a lot of land left. You know, this property off of Providence Road is going to be a whole developed thing. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the map here just to see. You know, Trask is probably your best bet. There's already a house up there. Um, Which is another house that we don't know what the condition is, do we? No. And that's another that one, one I would be, love to that see. That one might be in tougher shape than the... Right. than the hazard house <laughs> now flipped with affordable housing money and turned into some sort of again you know that could be two units right there um, well that may so, not be the best use of that land that land was for the town it was whether the town wants to make houses right. up there or have it more for open land and recreation or something I that let me look that property may be I mean it's deed restricted so it's not all that restricted but there may be limits on what can be done up there as well. We don't have a town crier that we can advertise it in, do we? Well, yeah. they they're online, aren't they? No, no. Town crier's gone, done, well, finished. Now that Marilyn passed away. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, Al passed. Oh, Al. Al passed away. Yeah. Al passed away, and now they. I just got a notification today that the Menden Upton version and the Milford version is done. Oh, that's too bad. Well, it was nice. It while is. It Give me a second to try and find. Well, there's the, the Milford documents. Daily News, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. I'm not even so sure because they don't have much. Where's my folder on Trask? Um, All right. Well, I think I know we've got three days, but three days isn't a lot. <laughs> well, or you you hold off till the May town meeting, but it, that probably would involve some sort of a delay. It would. Um, here, I found Trask. Just let me find the Menden part of it. And we don't have any other land, like individual, like parcels, like. Ask you'd have to ask Ann Mazar, but I'm not. All that positive that we do to the town of Minden. Well, well the there's the Inman Road land and the road up off of Quisket Street, but that that's all for open land. I don't know that you can put a building on them. Right. I don't think that that's buildable, is it? No, but she might be aware of other smaller lots. Uh, the Trask property can only be used as as parks and recreation facility or a school building site. Yeah, I thought Nothing they else. had. A they can't have it as parks and recreation building. Yeah. Um, you could have your office down there. Well, you already got a house and a barn there the up barn. there, but but we don't have the, all those facilities are currently subject to a life right. estate with someone who isn't living there. But that's another story. Right. All right. Well, I I'll I call know. Cindy. I I don't know why, but I've just got this feeling in my gut that we're not going to save this house. No, um, I don't. I think I'm with I, you. But I think what we do need to do is make sure that you know. I, I don't know. I don't know how else you can. You can't force somebody to contact you, right? So we've kind of been living on borrowed time with this property anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew at some point he was probably going to want to close it, and mm. okay. Well, I'll talk to Kathy. I'll talk to Cindy. I'll send some emails out, and if anybody, if Anne thinks of any parcels or Kathy or whatever. Um, 
I don't think there's a, there's worth putting anything on the warrant and then taking it off. No, but at least, I mean, we can find out, you know, maybe if the applicant's willing to wait until May, but I somehow I'm thinking at this point, probably not, but I mean, I can give you his number if you, if you want to talk to him or if Kathy wants to give him a call. Yeah, if you could, can you? I don't particularly. No, can you, guy can you situation. text me his number? Yeah, I will send it to you if one of you wants to chat and maybe we can come to an agreement as to what the proper next steps would be. You know. Okay. All right. I don't know. Well, I don't know either, Daniel. So are we adjourning? I think we could have that. What about putting it up on Memorial Field? And that's your parks and recreation building. And then you can use it as like an overnight intern building right. for anybody who's. I think we should. I beach. want the house next door. Yeah. No, you're just being. Yeah, that would be nice. this little one up there full of mold and with that's broken beans. Well, what about the one that's on the parking lot side there that it looks like it's a portable classroom? Yeah, that's ours, but it's too small and it's near. Well, I mean, would, would that be would the house three bedrooms like and replace take it? it that for this yeah, year? Right. No. So the problem, the problem with public facilities is they have to be compliant. So you'd have yeah. to put an elevator in the house or you can only use the first floor. Well, isn't it a rock? Yeah. It was a cape, isn't it? I think it's got, I'd have to look. It's a cape, I think. It's a cape. Yeah. It's a cape. It's a full cape. Yeah. Um, I think we have. Upstairs uh, probably isn't. You know, um, unfortunately, there's, there's no dormers. The upstairs probably isn't as, you know, not not a huge a lot of space, and you're under the roof lines, you know. But um, what is it downstairs? But whether the downstairs would be any bigger than that portable classroom you're using, I don't know. We don't know because we can't get in to see it. Well, yeah, here no. it's got a it's what. Well, you got the dimensions. What is it? Twenty four yeah. by thirty or something. Twenty five by thirty four, and then the back. Yeah. This back room is 18 by 14. Oh, that's so, nice. So actually, that's this nice. is roughly the same dimension as the classroom, but yeah, 20 ish by. You've already got bathroom 40 -ish. in there. That would be good. Yeah, but we have no septic. Yeah, so that's true. Can't you be have doing no that. septic at the memorial field? Not near the classroom. That's another project. Well, you can't have cesspools up there, anyways. Don't they have to be tanks and be pumped? So yeah, so, well, no, so it's not. We're. The beach is on tight tanks. The bathrooms are on a septic on the other side of the property. We're looking at installing a septic system for the beach that could pump across the street. Mm -hmm. To this little house. In the, in the. Um, and I'm trying to get you a little building up there. You know that, right? Right. But we're talking about moving. If we'd moved anything, it'd be up in the woods. So I just, if we, if we spent that kind of money in a parks building, it needs to be four times the size of this. That's the potential well, I think issue. I just being but. pushy now, Dan. You know, I mean, this would We're be giving you a like building, this would be lovely, but virtually nothing, just moving space, and you, you don't know, want it. If you could move this and the classroom and have them tied together or something. Yeah. Well, you could do something like that. You could always add on, too. That's the other thing. You could add on in the back. You know, yeah. I don't know what kind of condition it's in. And, you know, really whether we it would don't. survive moving. We don't. That's And that goes back know. to the main problem. It, it appeared to be on a good concrete, uh, no, granite foundation. From what you can see from the front, I don't know what in the back, but all right. Well, right. Well, let's do some work on it. Um, so our next meeting is. Can I ask a question first? Yes. Did the stuff come in for the grave cleaning? Because we should set that up. Yes. You've got all I've got all the equipment. We just got to order the cleaner itself. That's still on the to do list. But if there's concrete plans of doing something, I will try and get that done. Um, I got all the miscellaneous scrapers and tools and things. Well, were we going to have another um, workshop? Did you say another workshop that I'm I don't know. I'm not yeah. aware. We were talking about it, but I don't think anything. I think we've we've yeah. got a few other projects that we've got to kind of yeah. move along here first. Um, Maybe we could schedule something for spring. Well, I think we yeah, and I think it might be kind of nice to um, 
you know, look at getting maybe the steward situation and everything ready and then do the workshop in the spring. But let me, um, I can't even remember what we agreed on that. All right. Um, our next meeting, we don't have to be at the hearing. Um, you don't have to be at the hearing unless somebody, people want to attend. The next yeah, meeting on the calendar Monday. right now would technically be October 17th if we're yeah, sticking October to the third 17th, Monday. That's a Monday. And then go from there. Yep. Yeah. First and third is planning, right? No. Planning is oh, uh, second and, and fourth. Okay. So select let's board is a not. meeting for October 17th, which is a Monday at 7 p.m. Is 7 p.m. good for everybody? Good for me. Okay. We'll do it 17 at 7 p.m. Um, and we'll kind of hopefully keep checking your emails because if there's any updates or anything, I will email everybody. Okay. All right. Can I, ha do I, do I need a motion for people to, to close the meeting? I make a motion we close. I'm second. Okay, Janice seconded. Connie. All right, Janice, Aye. thank you. Everybody in favor? Dan. Aye. Okay. Okay, we're good. All, All right, right, everybody, thank you.